Welcome to an autumn Saturday perfectly designed for college football in Stillwater, Oklahoma, where the Oklahoma State Cowboys today try to walk away from last week's heartbreaking overtime loss to Texas A&M. Mike Gundy and his Nebraska counterpart Bill Callahan both coming off last second defeats a week ago, but both still have very achievable goals to play for today at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater as number 20 Nebraska comes for a visit to take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. ESPN College Football presented by Best Buy. The Big 12 North just got a shakeup. Nebraska at this moment has first place by itself because Missouri just lost to Oklahoma 26 to 10. Oklahoma State at the bottom of the South, but still they can achieve their preseason goal with two more victories of becoming bowl eligible. So welcome on a perfect day to Stillwater. I'm Dave Barnett, and today really is about who has the shortest memory. Nebraska, one play away from its biggest victory in five years, just missed against number five Texas last week. Oklahoma State allowed a touchdown with three seconds to go in regulation and fell on a blocked extra point in overtime to Texas A&M. But Ray Bentley, first of all for Nebraska, as Zach Taylor looks back at that game, he can look at his own performance and say, I really pretty much did everything I needed to do for that biggest win in five years. Yeah, the senior quarterback did his job last week, and he's the perfect guy to run Coach Bill Callahan's very complicated West Coast offense. He's a very smart player, said he feels 20 times better running the show this year. He's a classic drop back type quarterback, but I think his opportunity today is going to be with his legs. Oh, uh, Oklahoma State defense gives up a lot of runs to the quarterback, so we have to see if Taylor can get that done. Now Bobby Reed looks back at last week doesn't remember much because he was knocked out with a concussion. He is fine to go and will start today. Right. Just missed one day of practice this week. But Reed is ready to go. The third rated passer in the nation in terms of efficiency. And he is a dual threat. He is very accurate with the arm, but he also can run. They love to get him on the perimeter and give him those run pass options. And when he does pass, he's got a couple of really good receivers to go to. Dewan Woods and Adarius Bowman. Bowman second in the nation, 113 yards a game receiving he's a big man at 6'4 230 pounds and Woods not as physical or not as big but he is definitely just as physical those two guys are going to pose a threat today to the Cornhuskers defense Oklahoma State hoping for its biggest win under Mike Gundy Nebraska hopes to hang on to first place in the Big 12 door we'll kick it off when we return to Stillwater Welcome again, Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, ESPN on ABC, college football presented by Best Buy. Dave Barnett, Ray Bentley, number 20, Nebraska, and Oklahoma State. Let's welcome the third member of our crew, Vince Welch. Bill Callahan's Cornhuskers giving up just 14 points per game. Oklahoma State averages 37 per contest. How do you slow down Bobby Reed and the Cowboys? I don't know that you do, but it's going to be important that we get off to a fast start. They've only scored nine points in all Big 12 games in the first half, but they come out in the second half and scored 95. So it's going to be critical not only that we start fast, but, but we finish a lot stronger. Did you let your team know that Missouri lost to Oklahoma today? Oh, absolutely. This is huge. I think they're all aware. They're all tuned into this race right now. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Bill Callahan in his third year, 19 and 12 at Nebraska. Mike Gundy, former record-setting quarterback here at Oklahoma State, his second year as head coach. Four-year starter during the Barry Sanders era, 86 to 89. Two stints, four years total as offensive coordinator and succeeded Les Miles when Miles took the LSU job. Nebraska has won the toss and deferred and the always dangerous, entertaining Parrish Cox. Freshman drops back for the top kickoff return team in college football. Cox individually sixth nationally better than 31 yards per return. Tops in the Big 12. Jake West's kick return from the six. And Cox looks for a block. Gets around the corner and run out of the 32-yard line. Oklahoma State goes from there after a 26 yard return and Bobby Reed the sophomore from Houston Texas who grew up a fan of the old school quarterbacks Joe Namath Johnny Unitas Fran Tarkenton even Y.A. Tittle his favorites obviously spent some time watching NFL films in his day picked Oklahoma State over Ohio State 
And a four-point student this fall. 60% completion, 17 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. Yeah, he is fun to watch, Dave. He, he can do all, all things with the football. And they will start on the ground to Mike Hamilton, part of a three-man running back committee for Oklahoma State, the sophomore from Melbourne, Florida, on the carry. The rest of the city starting offensive unit for the Cowboys. Hamilton with the blocker Burton and we expect Brandon Pettigrew perhaps to play a big role today. Yeah, I think he is one of the better tight ends in the Big 12 and he's a guy they like to get the ball to him. You see him moving, switching sides up top here early on. Ricky Price also in motion and again they try Hamilton on the right side. Shoved out of the 38 yard line to bring up third down. Nebraska's defense tied for first in the conference with Texas, averaging just 14 and a half points allowed per game. And the two guys to watch today are the corners, Andre Jones and Courtney Grigsby, who kind of had a little trouble last week against Texas. And with these spectacular wideouts for the Cowboys, they are going to be tested today. To me, that's one of the keys of the game. Can they hold up at the corners? So a third and five in the opening series for OSU. One man in the backfield, replay fake caught from behind by Adam Carricker. The preseason All-American defensive captain. A three and out on the first Oklahoma State series. And Carricker hasn't had the stats this year, just one sack compared to nine and a half last season, but that's because they've asked him to do different things. He's over on the tight end side more and is an anchor for that defensive line. But you can see in obvious passing situations, Carricker can flat out get after the quarterback. Matt Fodge leads the Big 12, better than 49 yards per punt. Has had three travel at least 70 yards, and this one is big. Returned from inside the 20-yard line, and the return is going to go big. For Courtney Grixby, Nebraska set up deep in Cowboy territory, but a marker is back at the 35-yard line. A 51-yard punt return, 46 yards by Grixby, but our referee today, Drew George, will let us know whether it stands. Receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. And that's a, a costly penalty. I don't know if we can see it on this replay. It looks like maybe right there. That's the only thing I can see uh, right up top, right behind the runner is where it actually occurred. But Nebraska had trouble returning punts last week. They used Terrence Nunn, and they used Nate Swift, and now Grixby gets his shot this week and did a heck of a job. So instead of deep in Oklahoma State territory, Zach Taylor starts from his own 25-yard line. From Norman, Oklahoma, the senior, son of Sherwood Taylor, former Oklahoma defensive back and captain, orally committed to Les Miles when he was the head coach here, but once he visited, he realized Josh Fields was the man here, so he decided to start his career at Wake Forest, and he starts the day with a give to Brandon Jackson who picks up 11 yards. City offensive starters for the Huskers. Jackson gets the start ahead of Marlon Lucky. All four of their backs expected to play today. And Terrence Nunray tries to forget the game deciding fumble that opened the door for Texas to sneak that win out last week. Yeah, he got, you know what? It wasn't really anything bad that he did. It was just a great play by the corner Ross from Texas that knocked that ball loose. And you know, that's just a tough one to get over. And everybody said to Terrence Nunn is if anyone can get over that and come back and play hard, it's him. Taylor, shotgun draw, Jackson. Broke a tackle, picked up right at eight yards. Two carries for 19 already. The Oklahoma State defense, 75th against the rush and ninth overall in total defense of the Big 12. And I like the defensive line that they have. They, these guys are all seniors. They know what they're doing out there. The one thing, though, they will run up the field in their pass rush, and they are susceptible to draws, which you just saw Nebraska run on that previous play. And that's the one thing I think Nebraska has to take advantage of. Meanwhile, uh, you know, those Cowboy linemen are going to get pressure on Zach Taylor. And the first time out. Zach Taylor over to the sideline. 
to confer on this opening possession of the Cornhuskers. Well, the guest of honor today at Moon Pickens Stadium played here and 18 years ago put to be together the best season ever, still the best ever by a college running back. 2,628 yards, 37 touchdowns, records on the way to a Heisman Trophy. Barry Sanders. You saw those guys missing him. I know how they feel. I played against Barry <laughs> Sanders, and he was one tough cat to bring down. Barry on hand today. Doesn't make that many appearances back in Stillwater. But Mike yeah, Gundy has fond memories. And I saw him make two runs in that freshman scrimmage. And I knew from that point on that he was going to be different than anybody else that had played in a long time. He did things with the football as soon as he walked on this campus that I hadn't seen done. And I would venture to stay still hasn't seen done and does not expect ever to see done. Let's go down to Vince Welch with Barry Sanders. Well, Barry, Mike Gundy said he knew right away that you were a special player. When you guys played together, did you have any idea he'd be a good coach? Well, I'm not surprised. You know, he's always been a hard worker and a winner. So uh, he's uh, always had those intangibles really to make a good coach. How does it make you feel when you come out and uh, watch the current day Cowboys? It's, it's great to be here. I mean, they got a lot of, lot of talent, been in some tough games, and um, really, really a good team. I'm proud of the strides we've made from uh, last year to this year. Good to see you, Barry. Thank you. And a fairly decent Barry Sanders imitation so far by Brandon Jackson, who carries again. Crosses midfield. Nebraska now to the 49 yard line of Oklahoma State as Victor DeGreat, their sack leader, defensive end, is shaken up. 1988 Heisman Trophy, single season records, rushing yards, touchdowns in both the college and pro football halls of fame. Yeah, I'm one of the guys that put him in the pro football hall of fame. I had several chances to tackle Barry in my day, never quite did get him down. You see Victor DeGreat able to get off the field on his own power. Mike Gundy says one thing has never changed about Barry and that is he does not crave the limelight. In fact that's why he feels he retired so early. He'd had enough and he was still healthy enough to look forward to a normal life after football and so with a lot of yards still on those legs he called it a career. Huge hole for Jackson into the secondary and up to the 33 yard line 16 more yards and right now the Nebraska offensive line is just taking it to the Cowboys. This is a tremendous hole that they're going to work in right here. You're going to see it coming right at you. There is nobody in that hole. No linebackers show up. The defensive line gets moved apart and it ends up Donovan Woods. The safety has to come up and make the tackle. Brandon Jackson was a, a big Barry Sanders fan growing up and when we talked to him told him Barry was going to be here he his eyes lit up and he said it gave him a spark. He's definitely been sparked here in his first drive. Keep it in the hands of the starter the hot back four carries on this opening series 42 yards before finally the Cowboys surged to stop him at the line of scrimmage. Jackson with a big 49 yard shovel pass touchdown in the Texas game last week first play of the fourth quarter broke three tackles Oklahoma State has had a few tackles of their own broken in these first five minutes so no gain second down and ten and Taylor from under center again for Jackson and again straight up the middle and Donovan Woods trying to drag him inside the ten yard line finally out of bounds. Brandon First Jackson. and goal, Cornhuskers, 24 yards this time for Jackson. And go ahead and let it run, fellas. You're just going to see people knocking other people off the ball. This Nebraska offensive line is getting a hat for a hat, coming down on some down blocks, and then they like to pull and kick out. Jackson finds that seam, and even when he gets hit, he's still hard to bring down out there. And look at the start for Brandon Jackson. Six carries, 65 yards here on the first drive. Marlon Lucky gives him the breather. He takes it off left tackle and is spilled at about the seven yard line by Larry Brown. Now one of the weaknesses of the Cowboy defense is the linebacker position where they've got some young players playing in there. Pat Levine a true freshman is playing in there as a linebacker and then Roderick Johnson who's a junior and those are the guys who have to step up in the running game and make plays and thus far they haven't been able to do that. Lucky the sophomore from North Hollywood California. With a gain of a couple second down and goal. 
I like the tight ends in this area of the field. Bob Peterson went in motion as Taylor rolls and throws to the back of the end zone, and it is incomplete, juggled by Maurice Purify. Little bootleg action. Purify was the backside receiver trying to come across the back of the end zone, get himself open. You're going to see him run inside, and then he'll get along that end line and just try to find a seam somewhere. He looks like he's wide open, and it took Zach Taylor a while to find him, and that one almost should have been caught, except that Donovan Woods got in there right on time to knock the ball out. Purify had enough hang time. Ball not free. Third and goal just inside the seventh. Opening series for the Huskers. And the throw for Nunn. And immediately, Terrence Nunn knocked out at the four. Marlon Van Zandt, the junior corner out of Tyler, Texas. Yeah, Martel Van Zandt is an outstanding football player. He also is deaf, was deaf, born from birth. Deaf, and, and he uses hand signals to communicate with the rest of his team. But he communicates right there pretty well with Terrence Nunn. So the Oklahoma State defense finally stiffening after the Cornhuskers set up first and goal at the nine. And this will be a 21 yard field goal try for Jordan Congdon. They took Brandon Jackson out of the game and that shut down the offense. Ball start, 96, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Brandon Johnson. 96 whistle, and it'll be a 26-yard effort. There he is. You can see him. A little bit of wiggle there, and Johnson's a defensive lineman, but because of his size, they use him on the PAT protection team. Congdon, a freshman All-America last year. Two out of three this year. Not much business for him. This 26-yarder, though, is perfect. And Nebraska riding Brandon Jackson's six carries for 66 yards. Up 3 nothing. Bobby Reed back to work for Oklahoma State. When we return to Stillwater. Eight twenty-two back in Stillwater. 3 nothing. Nebraska. College football presented by Best Buy ESPN on ABC. From Boone Pickens Stadium, Jack Wesh has it teed up for the Huskers. After Jordan Congdon starts the scoring from 26 yards and Parrish Cox returns this one has room from the three and knocked out of the 28. Next week Saturday Night Football on ABC returns. Most of you will see a huge ACC showdown between Miami and the Virginia Tech team that just wailed on Clemson Thursday night. Others will see Marshawn Lynch lead number 12 Cal against their Pac-10 rival UCLA. Saturday Night Football on ABC Presented by Southwest Airlines next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. College football lives here. Reed on the play fake and the roll and wide open is his tight end, Justin Waller. Just his second catch of the year is going to be close for a first down. Sophomore from Ponca City, Oklahoma. And Ray, our IBM star one. And these are the two receivers that are definitely stars for the Cowboys, Dewan Woods and Adarius Bowman. Those are the two guys that make Bobby Reed look as good as he does. Not that he needs it, but those are two huge weapons for him. He'll also get it to the tight ends today. You saw that last pass to Waller. And it was enough for the first down. Dantrell Savage checks in for the first time at tailback with the Cowboys out of the eye and again Reed throwing off the play fake and again complete for a first down at midfield Dewan Woods with his first grab. Let's check in in New York for an update from Matt Weiner. All right Dave here's a very early vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of the day Miami at Georgia Tech first offensive snap for Tech Reggie Ball fumble forced by Callis Campbell and run back by Glenn Cook could be a difference maker in those offenses and defenses play. To vote for your Pontiac Game Changer performance, go to ESPN.com. <laughs> On the ground and Savage for about four. Dan Trell, a junior from Columbus, Georgia, transfer from Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. And the Cowboys third leading rusher leads the team though at 8.6 yards per carry. So of the three Hamilton Keith Toast and Savage Ray he may be 
the most serious home run threat. That's what he is. He is the home run threat. He's the guy that can go to the end zone on any given play because he has that kind of speed and acceleration. Savage for three, second and seven as Reed drops back in the spread from the shotgun. And after the little pump fake, it's Savage trying to break a tackle. Should have another Oklahoma State first down. He's inside the Cornhusker 40. Did I mention he has a little power as well? <laughs> He's got the feet turning pretty good. Not much of a hole, but he made his way through there with the power, and that's going to be very close to a first down. Savage last week against Texas A&M on just 13 carries picked up 134 yards so they're better than 10 per carry and that included a 60 yard touchdown against the Aggies. As the officials have to wait for the chains to be moved on another Oklahoma State first down first and 10 just inside the 40 their second possession trailing three nothing. And here's a rarity Oklahoma State's almost in a huddle. Yeah, almost. Yep. Yeah, that was a huddle. Close as they'll get. <laughs> Mike Gundy says, why huddle? There's really no reason. Well, he likes to change the tempos of his offense, keep the defense off guard. We get all our information where it needs to be when, although in this case, it's going to come after a timeout. Cowboys call their first 6.05 in the first quarter. Oklahoma State trailing three nothing but a promising drive brewing when we return to Stillwater. Back in Stillwater where after their timeout Oklahoma State has a first and ten just inside the Husker 40 on their second possession of this first quarter trailing three nothing Dave Barnett Ray Bentley and Vince Welch at Boone Pickens Stadium the OSU campus. 41st meeting of a typically Nebraska dominated series. They've won 36. They've lost only three times with a tie to the Cowboys. And the swing pass will lose yardage. Savage knocked back five yards by the quick reacting Cornhusker defense. Stuart Bradley, the linebacker, along with Carricker, went out there and, and made that play. Here's Pettigrew trying to block Carricker and then get outside and pick up someone else. But by then, Carricker already had the penetration necessary to blow that play up. And also in the backfield, Stuart Bradley. I think Bradley's one of the better players out there. He can both play inside and be tough against the run, and he also likes to be able to play out in space. One Husker defense held Texas to 18 total yards in the first quarter a week ago, and that pass batted up in the air by Carricker and incomplete, intended for Anthony Parks, so third and 16 for the Cowboys. See, here's here's a look at this tip, and that is actually number 54 who got the big hand up there. Ola Dog and Duro. I take it back. It was Adam Carricker. Ola right there too. Those two in the Nebraska defensive front combining to set up this third and 16. The Cowboys needing to get inside the 30 as Reed. Takes a long look off the roll and the pass is intercepted off the hands of Bowman and return near midfield for the Cornhuskers by Tier Green. Green was just in the right spot at the right time. That ball got tipped away. There was excellent coverage in the secondary by the Cornhuskers. There was really nowhere for Reed to throw the football. Watch the coverage here. You got Shanley number eight taking care of his business. Grixby over there taking care of business. And then Tier Green turns around. And look what I found. Ball comes right to him. He comes up with the play. His first interception. Well, look catchable. Bowman, I think when he looks back at that on video, will will agree with that assessment. And instead, Green turns it over to his offense at the 49-yard line. Amon's cousin. Makes it first and ten and Zach Taylor and Brandon Jackson back to work and more great blocking to set Jackson free down to the 22 yard line. Twenty nine yards at Oklahoma State Ray not close to having an answer for Brandon Jackson. Oh, and here's the guy right here that's got to make this play. That's linebacker Roderick Johnson. You see him over scrape and then gets kicked out. And you've got to come up inside tight, tight scrape up and in when you get that kind of flow of play and he carried it too wide 
gave that blocker an angle and another huge hole for the Cornhusker offense. This is like Nebraska of old, chewing it up on the ground. This time, no gain. Jackson trying the right side. You know, when we talked to Bill Callahan, he said, "You know, I love to run the football. If you can get the impression, West Coast offense is a lot of short passes and run after the catch, and that is true. But the base of it is the ability to run the football, and that's something that he really, you know, when they looked at it in the off season, said that's something we have to get better at, and they have vastly improved in their running game this year. Everybody would like this much balance. They're 18th nationally in rushing, 19th nationally in passing offense." So no obvious weaknesses second down Taylor as he's hit and complete near the first down to purify he's going to come up maybe a couple feet short near the 13. Boy, and Taylor showed you some courage right there standing in because he's going to take a hit late in that thing after he let go of it Marquis Fountain really put the hit to him but he hung in there took the hit and delivered the football. Zach Taylor now by the way the third leading passer all time for Nebraska and with a real shot today to become the number two all time passer in Cornhusker history He started the day needing 228 yards for number two he was only four yards away from number three here's third and one and with the power set they go back to Jackson and it's close. So the last two times Jackson touches it easily the best reactions by the front seven of the Cowboys. Boone Pickett Stadium on a 70 degree autumn afternoon ESPN on ABC presented by Best Buy. Number 20 Nebraska Oklahoma State both trying to bounce back from severe disappointments a week ago. Nebraska losing in the final seconds to Texas in Lincoln Oklahoma State losing in overtime here to Texas A&M. Dave Barnett with Ray Bentley and Vince Welch. Brandon Jackson, the story so far for the Cornhuskers. Eight carries, 95 of those 98 rushing yards for the Huskers. But Oklahoma State stops him short on third down. It was Andre Sexton who had 15 tackles last week in the ball game against AM. Stepping up where he left off last week, a big tackle for a loss, bringing up this fourth and one. It looks like Coach Callahan has decided to go for it. Cody Glenn checks in for the first time, a sophomore tailback from Rusk, Texas. Behind the fullback, Dane Todd. And they fake to him. They give on the end around for France Hardy, and Hardy will have the first down near the six. So they line up with a power look of old and you think it's going to be tailback you revisited and instead a little bit of, a, of an exotic this is how Nebraska got it on the tip ball off Bowman turning into Tier Green's first interception of the year right and that's just a big mistake by Bowman you're right about that Dave he's going to think back to that one and, and hope that he can make up for that later in this ball game. Set of downs for the Huskers just outside the 11. They go back to the spread look and Taylor out of the gun. Blitz, throw to none, and hit immediately by Jacob Lacey down at the six yard line. And let's check in below with Vince Welch. Well, guys, you saw Tier Green come up with that interception. He's used to catching the ball as a running back. He started his Nebraska career as a running back. In fact, had 112 yards in his college debut, but after his freshman season he switched to the secondary and the Huskers were awfully deep in the backfield and Brandon Jackson was one of the reasons that Tier Green switched to the secondary but he's shown that he can cover like a corner blitz like a safety and catch it like a running back and return it like a running back it all came back rather naturally Jackson just inside the five on second down third down and about three for the first and about four and a half for the touchdown. This is the area of the field where the Cowboy defense has done well. Had a couple of nice stands last week in their ball game, and they toughen up when it gets down into this red zone goal line area. They have done some things this year terrifically. They lead the Big 12 to third nationally in tackles for a loss among the national leaders in sacks per game, but late game issues have cost them twice. Taylor throwing the fade for purifying it is overthrown but there's a flag in the corner of the end zone. 
Lacey with the coverage. There was a little hand fighting going on before the ball got in the air. I don't, it's either going to be a, a hold or a pass interference against Lacey over there working on the receiver. Pass interference, defense, number 17. Interference occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Here's a look at it. Purify just running a, a fade route to the corner of the end zone. You see Lacey got the hands on him, and he had him on him for a little too long, but that's a little ticky-tack to me. Well, he didn't have any more hands on the... Uh... The receiver pure five and vice versa right. it's first and goal from the two and it is Jackson for the touchdown. So that's all they had to do was put Brandon Jackson back in the ball game. Touchdown Brandon Jackson his fourth of the year. He's going to get a nice lead block from his fullback Dane Todd you see him following right behind him gets right in the hip of Todd and pushes it into the end zone. Almost juggled that ball out on the way. So how about Jackson's first quarter 11 carries 99 yards and the first touchdown of the day. Nine nothing Cornhuskers Congdon who is perfect on all 37 of his extra points the sophomore from San Diego. First of all they tend to uh, an injured cowboy. I think he ended up at the bottom of the pile. Can't quite see the number at this point. There's a lot of bodies laying on top of him. Jer Jeremy Neathon injured after the touchdown by Jackson. Timeout in Stillwater. Jeremy Nephon, junior linebacker from Beggs, Oklahoma, now making his way to the Cowboy bench, shaking up on the Brandon Jackson touchdown. And he came into that pile late, and his head was down, and that's where you can get yourself hurt. Here he is over here on the left of your screen. He's going to come in and try to finish that thing off. And you see, once he gets hit, he kind of grabs his face mask and reassesses things, and they end up getting him off the field. He walked off on his own power, which is good news. Congdon now for the extra point in the 10 point lead. And Nebraska dominates the first quarter with 33 seconds in Stillwater. A 99 yard, 11 carry tailback clinic put on by Brandon Jackson. And his touchdown from a couple yards out, culminating that last drive. Tonight, two old rival coaches leading their teams onto the field. In SEC action on ESPN, Phil Fulmer in Tennessee, Steve Spurrier in South Carolina. Both trying to chase down Florida for the SEC East League. College football primetime on ESPN, 745 Eastern, 645 Central tonight. College football lives here, and whether Steve Spurrier is at Florida or in Columbia, Tennessee, enjoys the chance to beat him regardless. Yeah, people like to beat him for some reason. <laughs> And he doesn't mind making people feel like nah, the best bit. thing in the world is to beat the Steve Spurrier team. Brandon Jackson, a couple weeks in a row, Ray, making the tailback committee for Nebraska, maybe a concept that won't last the season. I mean, they, they're happy with all of them. Lucky, Cody Glenn, Kenny Wilson. But with one guy playing as well as Jackson has the last two weeks, there simply aren't enough carries for four, are there? No, there's not. And, and he has actually been playing well, like you said, the last three, four weeks. And if he continues to dominate like he has, there's no reason to have a committee. This return from the five by Grant Jones, like Cox, dangerous, well covered by the Cornhuskers. He does not have enough returns to qualify nationally, but Jones has averaged 39 yards on his first five kick returns this year, and that would be right around the top of the national list. See Bobby Reed's numbers so far in the two drives. That interception really not his fault. That hit Darius Bowman in the hands, and he just kind of beat it up, and it was tipped, and Tier Green took it. Hamilton is back. After Savage took a turn at tailback, they go end around. And on the carry, Artrell Woods. On what will be the final play of the first quarter. So Nebraska gets 99 yards and a touchdown from Brandon Jackson. A 
field goal by Jordan Congdon from 26 yards out. And as they try to take the North Division lead by themselves after Missouri's lost to Oklahoma. One quarter in the books, they lead Oklahoma State 10 nothing. Back after this and a word from our ABC station. Second quarter of college football presented by Best Buy. ESPN on ABC and number 20, Nebraska outgains Oklahoma State. 120 to 27 in the first quarter. They lead 10 to nothing. And to begin the second quarter, Bobby Reed and the Cowboys have a second down at eight. And Reed tossing to Ricky Price, who needs a block up the sideline, gets it and has a first down near the 30. Nice little quick screen out to the edge. They had a Darius Bowman, number 12, out leading the way to block for Ricky Price. You can see Bowman, he's, he's right here coming in to lead, make this block. Good block there by Purify, the tight end. Or excuse me, Pettigrew, the tight end. And they clear the way for a nice nine yard pickup on first down. Drew George, our referee. Tell us about the flag. Holding 43 defense. That penalty is refused. The result of the play, first down. They call on the defensive tackle Ty Steinkuhler. Father Dean, 1983 Outland and Lombardi winner for the almost national champions. A lot of people thought the best team in college football history until they lost that Orange Bowl to Miami. So from just across the 30, first down and breaking out of the eye, John Johnson, the fullback out wide, as Reed on play action. Throws the out, a nice diving grab made by Dewan Woods at the 44 for a pickup of 13. Oh, immaculate timing on the route by Woods. That ball was in the air prior to him making his cut. You can see him run this thing upfield, push Grigsby upfield, and Grigsby has to do the flip turn to come back, stumbles a little bit, and then the ball's right where it needs to be from Bobby Reed for Woods to make that grab. That's good execution. Woods, one of the few seniors who will not be part of this uh, extremely bright looking Oklahoma State future. Savage back for his second turn at tailback and he's tripped up after a short game. Well, and Adam Carricker is having a heck of a ball game so far. He makes another tackle running that one down from the backside. Missouri losing at home to Oklahoma today 26 10 so they are behind Nebraska in the loss column now as Savage turns it upfield and the Oklahoma State March has reached the 40 the 39 of Nebraska after a gain of 17 and they went with a quick count and you're going to see that they caught the Nebraska not ready guys were not set up here but by the time that ball was snapped and that allowed the offense an advantage. And that gives Savage just the room he needs to get around the edge. And they go on another quick count, which does not catch yeah. Nebraska surprise. But at this point, teams. That's a fumble at the end of it. Should have day. seen and the quick count by Oklahoma State. They try to feature that. Shanley signaling a Husker recovery. And, so and it is confirmed. Nebraska with a takeaway. Stewart Bradley at the bottom of that pile at the 40 up with the football and again the Cowboys hurting themselves take a look at it just a stretch play Savage cuts inside he's still got the ball there but he's fighting for more yardage and somebody put a hat right on the football and knocked it out late and Bradley came up with it this play being reviewed by the Big 12 uh, replay official Jim Evans upstairs Looked like it might have been Lance Brandenburg who got the helmet on the football and knocked it loose. Stuart Bradley, Nebraska tackling leader, three-year starter, who missed the final seven games last year with a knee with an apparent fumble recovery at his 39-yard line. You see Bradley with the long locks. He decided at the end of the year last year that he would not cut his hair and hasn't done so since the end of last season. Here's another look at it. And that ball squirts out right there. You can see it on the lower right hand side of your screen. That's definitely a fumble in my book. This angle should show the same thing. I don't think there's really anything close to overturning. Another player's back when he fumbled the football. First down. So the call upheld first down Cornhuskers. 
There's Stuart Bradley with the long hair. Heck of a football player. He's he's one of the more interchangeable guys for that defense. He can play out in space and he's also very good over the tight end and you can move him back to middle linebacker and he can get it done. Promising Oklahoma State drive ends. And Taylor and the Husker offense back to work. Changing up the play at the line here. Jackson picks up the blitz to throw floating wide open over the middle to the 33 yard line. The catch by France Hardy for 28 yards. That's a blown coverage by the Cowboys secondary because there was nobody that was covering France Hardy. And a nice job here by Zach Taylor of finding that receiver. He's looking for it right away. He sees it clear the linebacker, and there's really nobody left in the middle of the field. And Hardy's off on his way with a nice big play. And again, Taylor stands in there and takes hits. And that's the thing that impresses me the most about him. He has the intelligence to run the show, but he also has the toughness to stand in there. On the end around, Kenny Wilson, fourth member of the tailback committee. And run down by Patrick Levine near the 30. Ball fumbled after he was down. So all four have played now, Ray, but it's mostly been Brandon Jackson, who will go over 100 yards on his next carry. We've seen a little bit of lucky Cody Glenn for a play or two down near the goal line, and this time they figure out a way to get Kenny Wilson the ball on the end around. Right, they put him out in the slot, not at the tailback position, and still found a way to get his the ball into his hands and they do like to do that they like to spread it out and you know there's not a whole lot of uh, bad feeling between those four guys they like each other they hang out together and they, they revel in each other's success so that, it's a good situation that running back by committee I'll we'll be back next year two sophomores two juniors lucky not backwards that's Daniel Smith the defensive lineman who just blew past his blocker and made a big hit in the backfield. Our IBM star watch. For Nebraska it's that backfield that we've been talking about but it's been Brandon Jackson's day so far today. He has carried the bulk of the work and he's done an outstanding job but all three of those guys are pretty much interchangeable and then Kenny Wilson is another one you could throw into that mix. As early as it is, here's a must stop for the Cowboy defense. Down 10 to nothing. They have a third and 11. It's Taylor, well protected, delivers over the middle. First down, Nebraska to the 24 yard line. And again, it's Hardy, Taylor's junior college teammate at Butler County in Kansas. He was Taylor's leading receiver for the national Juco finalists. And Taylor, he's like Rocky right now. He wants to be hit, so he does better. Takes another shot, still delivers the ball right on the mark to Hardy to move the chains. To me, that's the mark of a, a mature quarterback. Somebody who can stand in there and see the field and not look at the rush and still make the throws late in the down and take the punishment and still get it done. Zach Taylor has the top three individual performances in school history and has missed only one of his first six passes today. Open into the secondary and into the end zone. Brandon Jackson has his second touchdown for the Cornhuskers. Wow, what a great cut he made. Right there, there was a good penetration into the backfield. He saw it cut just inside of it and then exploded through the hole all the way to the end zone. Brandon Jackson just keeps on rolling. You're going to watch there's going to be penetration up in here. Watch this cutback right there. Clears the line and there's good blocking downfield. Nobody left to make a play. Outstanding run by Jackson. And the snap dropped by the holder to keep it 16 to nothing. Congdon was 38 for 38 on this point after tries this year. T.J. O'Leary has been the long snapper the last couple of weeks. John has 69 in a row, and that's just a fumble by the holder, Jake Wesh. Well, Oklahoma State lost because of extra point problems last week. Now they get one in their favor, but they still trail 16-0.
career, Oklahoma State. Been bowled over in the first quarter, plus 16 to nothing. Look at uh, Nebraska team that's doing a pretty good imitation of a Tom Osborne or even a Bob Devaney team. No answer for Brandon Jackson on the ground. Zach Taylor with some timely over-the-top completions. And not much on the return here. Grant Jones gets only six yards out to the 20. Ray Bentley talked about uh, Brandon Jackson being excited that Barry Sanders would be here today because that's uh, his hero growing up as a kid. It was interesting. He said even when he was a young boy, he had a pair of Barry Sanders tennis shoes, but unfortunately he wore those out, tore them up out in the yard playing ball and said he didn't know which was worse. The fact he wouldn't have his Barry Sanders shoes anymore, he had to go in and tell mom that the shoes were ruined. Oh, I think the latter. Yeah. Well, mom wasn't going to buy him them shoes initially, but he uh, he carried on so much that she finally relented, got him those shoes, and then two days later, he blew them up out in the backyard doing a Barry Sanders imitation. Keith Toaston with his first carry, freshman from Angleton, Texas, second leading rusher for Oklahoma State. 308 yards and 5.3 per carry. Hamilton, Toaston, Savage, we've now seen all three in the Oklahoma State tailback committee. One of the number of things these two teams have in common, the top two offenses in the Big 12. And Reed forced to scramble, but there is room for him to run, and he's dangerous. And he may turn this one up for six. Last man with a chance knocks him out at the 20-yard line, and it's Tier Green who has an interception and now a touchdown saving tackle after Reed goes 56 yards. And that's all Bobby Reed. They're trying to run a fake quick screen, which they executed earlier, and Nebraska did not bite on it. They were in man-to-man -man coverage over there, so there's really nobody left to take Reed when he scrambles. There was Adam or Andrew Shanley, the free safety was in the middle, but he got juked, and that's Bobby Reed at his best when he just puts that football down under his arm and takes off. Reed, even with these great tailbacks, their leading rusher at Houston with 85 yards. 56 on that keeper. And the Cowboys in business at the 21. As Toaston goes up the middle of the 13. And I think that was the play that this Cowboy offense needed to kind of shake out the Cowboys because they have struggled. They turned the ball over twice in the early on in this ball game, and nothing really was happening for them. But Bobby Reed lit the fire under him with that big run. That put that Nebraska defense back on their heels a little bit. Reed, an option quarterback at North Shore High School in Houston. 5A State Division I champions. He was the Houston Offensive Player of the Year. And after the short roll, feels that pocket collapsing. And is chased out again by Adam Carricker. Continues a very busy first half. That's just good coverage downfield. He had nowhere to go with it. He had time initially. You're going to see Reed almost a little option fake. He's got the ball. He's just holding it. But he runs out of time eventually. And then Carricker is able to come off his block late. You see here he is working on Pettigrew. Staying in the play. Using his hands. Ends up making the tackle. That was a coverage sack. And the biggest play so far for the Cowboys. They need five on third down. Big blitz coming. It is picked up, and the floater over the middle to Toaston. Touchdown. All right, that's the double-edged sword of the blitz. Nebraska all-out gamble with the, with the blitz, and they didn't pick up the coverage on Toaston. It was Shanley who was trailing them, and Bobby Reed spotted it and threw the perfect pass for the touchdown. Here's a look at Bobby Reed just dropping it over the middle again. Just no coverage on that blitz pickup. Now Jason Ricks, who had two problems on PATs in the overtime loss a week ago to Texas A&M, had the one in overtime blocked, and has this one blocked. And returnable for Nebraska. But run down at the 40. Two-yard line on the return is Brandon Rigoni. So the Oklahoma State special teams have not cleared up all their issues. Now the snap was perfect. The hold looked good. And it wasn't that low of a kick, but it was Carriker who got through there basically unblocked 
and blocked that thing. And if Crossland doesn't make this tackle on Ragoni, they'd have added a couple more points. But the Cowboys are on the board as Reed beats the blitz and finds his freshman Keith Tostin. 16-6 Nebraska. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Well, some life in Boone Pickett Stadium in Stillwater now after Nebraska scores the first 16 points of the game. Bobby Reed comes back and hits Keith Tostin, the extra point block by Adam Carriker, but it's 16 to 6 Husker. 8-12 to go in the second quarter. That was a huge drive for the Cowboys to get themselves back into this ball game and actually develop a little bit of confidence. Bruce Redden with the kickoff. And it will not be returned by Lucky. So time for our Athlac trivia question. Nebraska has four players on pace to rush for more than 500 yards apiece this season. What was the last team to have four players rush for 500 or more yards in a season? The answer, a little bit later. You're going to need some time to chew on this one. Yeah, it look, is not obvious. That one up. I, it's not a Big 12 obvious answer. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of immediate teams. You'd think it would be an option team for sure. Well, we'd even think the ultimate option team is really Wishbone, Texas or Oklahoma. But maybe not. So from the 20, Taylor. Nice fake. And Lucky is wrapped up immediately by Patrick Levine. Let's get an update from Matt Weiner. All right, let's get a singular ESPN All-America Player of the Week update. Alan Patrick was number two on Oklahoma's AP rankings, but with Adrian Peterson out, Patrick carried the load 36 times, 162 yards, in the Sooners' road win over Missouri. Text vote to 87654 on your singular wireless phone to cast your vote. Circling it inside, nowhere for Taylor to go. It breaks down in a hurry, and then it just collapses. And Peterson and McBean combine on that sack. For Peterson, the junior from Tulsa, six sacks. And the punting problem for Nebraska is Dan Titchener standing in his own end zone. But when we have, he is kicking into. But a nice, high effort, fair caught at midfield. A rare fair catch by Parrish Cox. He usually likes to take a chance with those things. Great field position. Plenty of time for the Cowboys. Earlier, our Athlac trivia question. Nebraska, four players on pace to rush for more than 500 yards this season. The last team to have four players rush for 500 or more yards apiece. Not 
a Texas or Oklahoma wishbone team. And not that long ago, Navy last year. Lamar Owens, Adam Ballard, Marco Nelson, and Reggie Campbell. That's spreading it around. That's your troop committee right there. Reed of the offense back to work. And Poston stays in after the touchdown catch and powers his way up the right side for 12. And Toaston has the hot hand for the Cowboy offense right now. He ran away from a tackler at the line of scrimmage, showed you that burst of speed that he has, and then got the edge for a first down. And this offense has woken up. Toaston, a mature freshman, coaches say that's what got him on the field, and production is what will keep him on the field. And the Cowboys are seeing that out of him now. So they try him again. He's got great blocking. He's again into the secondary and another first down to the 23 of the Cornhuskers. Same play, a zone play to the right side. And this time the Cowboy offensive line just knocked Nebraska off the ball. And Tostin, he, he didn't really have to make a move at all here as they win up front to the Cowboys. Nice block right there by Russell Okung, number 76, clearing the way for Tostin. 14 yards after 12 on first down. He's carried four for 37, and he's got a touchdown catch. And he's got the Cowboys first and 10 to the Nebraska 24. Under five minutes and a half. Three straight, same running play to the same running back. That's that same zone play, and it's the old five-yard rule, where if you get five yards on a play, you might as well run it again. And Make them make them stop it. And so far, Nebraska hasn't been able to stop that play. Running over there behind that right side of the offensive line, Russell Okung, Kurt Seafried, and Tostin's getting it done over there. Takes a breather, replaced by Savage. After a pickup of six. Antrell Savage, left side, and there's room there. Savage, touchdown. That's a great play call right there by Mike Gundy. Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator. They had run that same play, that zone play to the right three times in a row. They gave the same blocking look and ran almost a naked to the back side to the running back. And Savage gets the speed off the edge to make it happen. Here's the block by the tight end Pettigrew, but Carriker, he was playing that same zone play that they had seen three times previous. Now the extra points are anything but automatic right now for Oklahoma State. Blocked in overtime against A&M last week. First one blocked by character this afternoon. Ricks will get this one off before whistles. And naturally, this is the one that's perfect. Yeah. Well, that could be a confidence builder for Ricks. Dead ball, false start. 76 offense, five-yard penalty. Replay the try. Russell Lokon. Freshman who starts at uh, right tackle today from Fort Bend, Texas, recruited by Nebraska. So, again, they make it as hard as possible. We'll back up five yards and have Ricks again try to make it a three point game. Ricks was pretty down after that blocked extra point in overtime last week. He, Coach Gundy said he sat around his locker for about an hour after the game. He finally had to take him out, bring him to his parents, and pep him back up and tell him, hey, you're our kicker. Don't you worry about it. You just come back to work. And back to work he is. And that one makes it 16-13. The Cowboys come back with a Reed to Toaston touchdown pass and an 18-yard savage run. Shadow starting to stretch across Boone Pickens Stadium in a 70 degree autumn afternoon in Stillwater. College football presented by Best Buy and after Nebraska controlled things to a 16 nothing lead. The Cowboys come back with back to back touchdowns for Mike Gundy. And they cut it to three. Culture changes in both programs. Bill Callahan, his third year installing the balance of the West Coast offense in Lincoln, and Mike Gundy, the former Oklahoma State quarterback, in his second year as his alma mater's head coach. Four and seven last year comes in with a chance to go five and three overall, and even the Big 12 record at two and two. 
with the win over the number 20 team in the country today. This is Hardy struggling to the 22 on the return. And a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And the story for Nebraska centers around number 32, Brandon Jackson, the junior from Horn Lake, Mississippi, scored first from two and then from 24. Yeah, he took over the game in the first quarter, but then Bobby Reed answers after scrambling for 54. He hits Toasted for the touchdown, beats the blitz, and then they get another one on the ground from Savage to get back into this ball game. Zach Taylor's been near perfect. Brandon Jackson on 12 carries has 123 yards and those two Cornhusker touchdowns. And he returns and takes the first handoff for maybe a yard. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Just a yard for Jackson that time. See wholesale personnel changes for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And second and long, putting in different groups. Third road game in four weeks for the Huskers. In between the home loss to Texas 22 20 a week ago they began the day tied with Missouri Missouri lost at home to Oklahoma earlier and lucky breaks tackles all the way to the 44 yard line 21 yards let's get an update from that one. Dave, it's a Verizon Wireless update from Corvallis. Final regular season road trip outside the state of California for USC and a bit of a slow start. Down 7-0, but Chauncey Washington pulls his way in from two yards out. Beavers have tacked on a field goal, so it's 10-7 there now. What to make of USC? I mean, they're still <laughs> undefeated. Know. Have to give them that, but uh, nowhere near overpowering. Gonna Lucky to, again, and that's about nine and a half, maybe ten. I think you're going to have to wait till the end of the year to make a decision on uh, USC. Andre Sexton, the redshirt freshman, strong safety from Houston, and the Cowboys' leading tackler is down. Really impressive young uh, defensive back coming off a career high 15 tackles last week against AM. Former Houston area defensive player of the year redshirted after preseason injury last year. And uh, in visiting with him yesterday never once did it dawn on me. We're talking to a freshman redshirt freshman. Yeah, he was he was very composed. He acted like the fresh Prince of Bel Air when we spoke with him. Very uh, congenial fella. Now to clarify his favorite vacation spot. He's never actually that's, been to. That's in theory. But he thinks Australia yeah. would be great. <laughs> yeah, he was fun to talk to. And it looks like he's okay shaking it off on the sideline. It is uh, first and ten Cornhuskers, 215 and a half. They have one timeout remaining. Huskers three and one. And at the moment, a top the North Division by themselves. Missouri now three and two. Lucky breaks more tackles. Donovan Woods drags him down at the 30 after a gain of 16. Now the first quarter, it was all Brandon Jackson. The second quarter, it's turning into the Lucky Show. You're going to watch. You're going to get a little pull by the guard right here. 61 pulling around to lead the way is Mike Huff. He gets a block on the safety out there, and then all the rest of it is Lucky. I should say the skill of Lucky. Taylor on the short drop fires complete. And Purify wrapped up immediately by Van Zandt. So if all you've seen is what Brandon Jackson's done this half, you wonder well, why does Nebraska bother with the committee? Well, the reason is what Marlon Lucky's doing. How, exactly. do, you, how do you make him sit all game? They've, they've got four good ones and each as good as the next. So you got to give them all their chances. Lucky no game. Coming up, Capital One halftime show. John Craig and Doug have highlights and analysis from all the afternoon's big games, including the big one in the Big 12, Oklahoma's win in Columbia, Missouri. 20
26 to 10 to drop the Tigers to three and two and a half game behind Nebraska in the North Division. On third and two, Taylor throwing way back across and purified, tiptoeing up the sideline for the touchdown. What athleticism by Purify catching that out route and then being able to break the tackle and also keep his balance and tightrope down the sideline. That's a special play from a special player. He had a big touchdown catch last week, Nebraska's first score against Texas, and he counters it with this touchdown right here as Parrish Cox doesn't wrap up, tries to push him out of bounds, and the balance of Purify keeps him in. And the Nebraska offense comes back with an answer. Congdon with the extra point. Oklahoma State puts 13 straight on the board. Taylor with his ninth consecutive completion. Purify with his fourth touchdown of the year. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Parrish Cox on the return of the kick. One of the most dangerous in the country returns all the way to the 45 yard line of Nebraska. 38 yard return for Cox who began the day number six nationally and number one in the Big 12 in kickoff returns. And Nebraska squibbed the ball which you hope would negate a return but they get great blocking and Cox will find the scene and then he's got the speed to take it the distance gets forced out of bounds at the end of that play by Ben Eisenhart but a great return to set up good field position here for the Cowboys as they try to answer back. They have two timeouts and they need to get a move on because uh, the clock rolls after the possession change it's at 25 seconds as Woods goes in motion the snap with 22 seconds and Reed going deep Bowman a Darius Bowman touchdown one play 45 yards for Oklahoma State. Wondered how long it was going to take for them to get the ball to a Darius Bowman. Just a skinny post route. Reed through the perfect pass. And this one goes all the way to the house. And Oklahoma State answers. What a great throw by Reed. You see the perfect technique. Sticks it right on the numbers. And Bowman at 6'4, 230, does not go down easily. Breaks that tackle and gets into the end zone. Courtney Grixby, minus 60 pounds, had little hope of bringing Bowman down. And the Darius with a chance to again bring the Cowboys within three if Ricks can handle the PAT and he does. So two touchdowns in the final minute of the first half. Taylor to purify and in one play Reed to Bowman to answer from 45 yards out. And you got to go back to that kick return by Parrish Cox to get him into that field position to take that chance take that shot down the field. These are the top two offenses in the Big 12, so you kind of expect to see some fireworks. But Bobby Reed throws the perfect strike, and again, as you said, Dave, Grixby, no physical match, giving away six inches and 60 pounds to Bowman. He's just not going to be able to bring him down with a one-arm swing. A Darius Bowman, the transfer from North Carolina, from Chattanooga. Against Kansas, one of the best days in college football history. 13 catches, 300 yards, and four touchdowns. Best ever by a Big 12 receiver. 11th best by any receiver in college football history. And out of those 300 yards, I would wager about 180 or so of them were run after the catch yards. And you see what a physical weapon he is when he gets his hands on the football. He is a threat to go to the house every time. See how Bruce Redden handles the kick. It didn't work that well for Nebraska. So he booms this one deep. That worked. Well, thinking about a return was uh, Harding. Tomorrow, join ABC as some of the PGA Tour's best fight for a spot in the top 30 on the money list and a berth in the season ending tour championship. Live final round coverage of the Chrysler Championship begins tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here on ABC. Jonathan Bird by a shot over Madison Gordos Els and Troy down in Florida. And uh, this will be the last play barring the flag. 
as Lucky reaches the 18. So a flurry of scoring in the final minute of the half. The Huskers score the first 16. Brandon Jackson runs wild. Bobby Reed recovers and throws a couple of touchdown passes to Keith Tostin and to Darius Bowman. And Oklahoma State fights from behind at home. And let's check in down on the sideline with Vince Webb. Well, Coach, you've scored a lot of points here in the first half, but hanging on, how do you, what adjustments do you look to make defensively? Well, it's a heck of a game so far. We knew coming in they were an explosive football team. I think more or less on defense, when we got good structure. They just happened to keep the play alive, and uh, they create some moments there where they create plays with their feet with their quarterback. Thanks, Coach. Nebraska 23, Oklahoma State 20. Stay tuned for John Craig and Doug with the Capital One Halftime Show after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And back and ready for the second half in Stillwater. College football presented by Best Buy and number 20, Nebraska with his hands full. 23-20, they lead Oklahoma State. Welcome again, Dave Barnett, uh, in week three of my Adrian Peterson impression with Ray Bentley. And two teams combined for 353 total yards in the second quarter, a game that Nebraska seemed to have in hand. 16-0, Bobby Reed turned it around. Well, Oklahoma State was in a sling just like you are until Bobby Reed stepped up and made that big 56-yard scramble to kind of wake the Cowboys up. You see him fake the pass. They were running a fake quick screen, which they had executed earlier. Nothing there, and Reed just takes off and you see the explosiveness and the speed that he has and the ability to make something out of nothing and then they scored shortly thereafter and that really is what kind of spurred them to that comeback. Nebraska will get the ball to begin the second half. Redden's kicks continue to be boomers and they'll start again at the 20 yard line. And Vince Welch had a chance to visit with Mike Gundy at the half. Well, chatted with the Oklahoma State coach. He said he didn't feel like either team had played very well defensively, but his Cowboys have definitely got to stop the run better, and he believes that stems from not tackling well. He said we got to wrap up and tackle better, go back to the basics there, continue to force the issue on offense, and he said, I want to have the ball at the end because the team with the ball last just may win this one today. Boy, it does have that feel, doesn't it? Both teams losing in the final seconds last week. Somebody may experience that feeling again today. Jackson reversing field. Brandon Jackson. 18 yards on a play that was going nowhere. And finally chased down by the defensive end, Victor DeGree. Well, he's going to be bottled up over here on his right. You see there's good penetration, good push, and he just squeezes out of the tackle attempt from Roderick Johnson, spins around, and there's nothing but green on the far side, and he takes off until Victor DeGreat can run him down. Nice move by Jackson. He shows you that he can do all kinds of different things. Continues to share the load with Lucky. A little bit of Cody Glenn and Kenny Wilson, but Brandon Jackson chairing the IBAT committee today. And nine straight completions coming to an end on that trap by Purify. As we look at our Pacific Life game summary. And there it is, and you see the stats relatively even at this point. The big thing you look at is the two turnovers by OSU early in the ball game, leading to 13 Nebraska points. Since that point, they've kind of gone back and forth, and they've gotten themselves into this ball game. Taylor now 9 for 11 for 109 yards and a touchdown. And Jackson again trying the right side. This time, the Cowboys keep him there. No chance to cause any further havoc. DeGreat plants him. Senior defensive end from DeSoto, part of the senior front four for Oklahoma State, the strength of their defensive unit. Yeah, the thing that impresses me when I watch Victor DeGreat play football is the relentless motor and pursuit that he has. And he displayed that on the previous run where he ran Jackson down after he cut the thing back. And that's one thing that Coach Vance Bedford told us. He says, you get everything this kid has every play. The blitz on third and ten. Taylor has room, scrambles for the first down, and crosses midfield. Zach Taylor with a pickup of 16 yards, run down by defensive tackle Ryan McBean. 
Oh, and that's not Zach Taylor's game, but there are opportunities against this Cowboy defensive line because they get upfield so much. See, three of them get behind the quarterback. So obviously there's room in front. Taylor sees that. And when I spoke to him, he said, hey, I, I'm not going to score any touchdowns on long runs, but I can get you seven or eight and then slide. He forgot about the slide that time. Nebraska nearing 200 rush yards. Zach Taylor at one time had committed to Oklahoma State. Changed his mind when he realized uh, how entrenched Josh Fields was here. That throw complete to Maurice Purify and another Husker first down, a gain of 14. Another just timing route on the outside, a deeper out pattern, and Purify runs that pattern to perfection, and Taylor delivers the ball right on time. And those two have really picked up their game in the last few weeks. Early in the season, Purify didn't really get a lot of opportunities, but since he's been getting more opportunities, he's really showed that he is their number one target. Bill Callahan's Nebraska teams have never lost a game they have led at the half. 17 and 0. 14 and 1 when scoring first. And they had both those trends covered today. As Jackson gets about three. Zach Taylor having an outstanding game today, completing the ball all over the field, but you see his most effective stuff is underneath and to his left where he's got the biggest numbers. He's got the one down the, the middle of the field, the long one, but other than that, it's been a lot of underneath short passing type stuff, which you expect out of the West Coast offense. And his favorite receiver, Purify, has done most of his damage on those short left passes, including his touchdown late in the half. Jackson to the 27th. And a third and four coming from there. Huskers led 16 to nothing. Reed ignited the Cowboys with a 56 yard scramble. He hit Keith Toasted over the middle, beating a Husker blitz. Later on, the 45 yard strike on a post to Bowman just before the half. They make it 23-20, and now they try and hold on a third and four. There's a little confusion in Nebraska offense. They're not sure where to line up at first. Taylor from under center, and the play is broken, and Taylor is dropped two yards shy of the first by Donovan Woods, the former quarterback who moved to free safety last year and gave way to Bobby Reed. Yeah, there was confusion coming out of the, the huddle in terms of where do we go, and you see Zach Taylor, he went the wrong way. He has really no, no option other than to tuck it and try and get what he can on that critical third down. A 42-yard Jordan Congdon field goal try here. His longest is 38. Coming in today, just two out of three for the year. Nebraska specializing in touchdowns this year. This one has plenty of leg, but is no good. He kicked it into the construction zone. A couple of years, there'll be 20,000 seats over there. And Boone Pickens Stadium will uh, be one of the showcases of college football. But as it is, Congdon just uh, sailing that one into the big hole. And keeping it 23 20, Nebraska. One Huskers threatened but miss a 42 yard field goal, and Oklahoma State taking over at their 25, still within three. On their first possession of the second half, Dave Barnett, Ray Bentley, and Vince Welch. Brandon Pettigrew from right to left to tight end. Ricky Price goes in motion. Bobby Reed with a fake to Mike Hamilton and looks to throw on the run and throws it away. A couple of years away, Boone Pickens Stadium will add 20,000 seats. The end zone to our left and a top notch football facility, all part of a $165 million donation from the stadium's namesake, Boone Pickens, a record from any individual ever to an athletic program at any university. Boy, was Mike Gundy excited about the prospects and, and the, the redoing of all the facilities here. And he's got thinks he's got a football team that will match the facilities when things are done. Reed with a give to Hamilton. He had a block out there in the corner by Woods. 
And he's out after a gain of eight with Boone Pickens, Vince Welch. Well, thank you very much, Dave. We were just uh, laughing with Mr. Pickens there when that missed field goal it went into the construction zone area. It'll be a different area here in a year or so. Uh, why did you make that significant of a donation here it, to the university? It was very simple. I'm 78 years old, and I want Oklahoma State to be competitive in the Big 12. And we are going to be the competitive. We're going to take a look at this uh, next play here in just All a right. moment, uh, and then we'll uh, come back to you. Okay, good. Well, if they're not competitive, they will not be able to say it's because they don't have the finances. Not anymore. Woods with the first down of the 39. Vince. What assurances have you gotten from your program that uh, it's going to be better because of the upgraded facilities? Do you put a little pressure on Mike Gundy in that regard or not? All of us have pressure on us. I've got to invest the money, make 20%. Holder's got to set up the program, make it go. Gundy is a hell of a football coach. He's a winner. We're going to win. And the rest of Big 12 knows it. They know we're coming. Thank you. Congratulations on the gift and uh, wish you the best of luck. Good. Thank you, Vince. Mr. Pickens. And uh, timeout called by Bobby Reed with 10 12 to go in the third quarter. 23 20 Nebraska. You're watching ESPN on ABC. OSU Student Union behind the fountain as the autumn colors start to take over here in the Stillwater, Oklahoma. 70 degree afternoon, perfect. Just a little bit of a breeze behind Bobby Reed and the Cowboys here after their timeout. They have a first and 10 at the 39 yard line. And Reed keeping all the way for 11 to midfield. Well, if you're Mike Gundy and you have that kind of Boone Pickens donation behind you, you have to wonder what kind of return Mr. Pickens expects for that investment. He wants to come over here, graduate, do everything right, and go out in society and be very, very uh, successful. Now, he wants us to win here because he's a winner himself. Uh, he's never talked to me about expectations. He wants us to be competitive. He wants us to get our players to compete every day, no matter who we're playing, and then just develop them as young men. Look at that formation. Four receivers in a diamond, bottom of the picture, and the pass goes the other way and is batted down incomplete. Yeah, they just set it up, overloaded one side to try to get the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the backside between Woods and Andre Jones. And nothing there. It was batted down. It's an interesting matchup. Woods and Jones played Rocket or Pop Warner football together, a championship team at age 11. At Oklahoma City, uh, Jones was the fullback, Woods was the quarterback. They know each other from way back. Donovan Woods also on the team as a linebacker, and Dantrell Savage taking a turn at tailback, where he's been. Productive when called on at eight and a half yards for the junior from Columbus, Georgia. You know, to finish up a little bit with, with Mike Gundy and the construction that's going on here, you could just feel and hear the excitement in his voice when he talked about the things and the wow factor that he was going to be able to bring here and show to recruits, and he really feels it's going to be instrumental in turning around the football program here at OSU. Third and short, Savage hit behind the line twice, spins, and the extra effort pushes him across the 40. First down, Savage does all of that on his own. Well, he does a great job of avoiding a pile first that Bo Rudd, Bo Rudd's going to come flying up in here. Here he is, linebacker. He's going to make the pile. He gets over the pile right there, steps over Rudd, avoids Brandenburg, and just keeps fighting for the extra yards, and that's the kind of thing that can spark an offense right there. Talking about being productive when called on. Savage on just 13 carries last week against A&M, 134 yards. Including a 60 yard touchdown. He broke 170 against Florida Atlantic earlier in the year. Keith Tostin now taking a turn, dotting the eye. And Tostin piled up after a couple. The NBA season tips off Wednesday night with two games on ESPN. First at 8 Eastern, Gilbert Arenas leads the Wizards into Cleveland to face King James and the Cavaliers. And then at 10 30 Eastern, Elton Brand and the Clippers. Take on Steve Nash and the Phoenix Suns. NBA opening week. It's game time on ESPN Wednesday. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Kia NBA shoot around. 
Oklahoma City. Just an hour plus away. Excited about the return of the Hornets. That ball batted down by Jay Moore on the pass intended for Bowman. Third and eight. Well, we haven't mentioned Jay Moore much today, and it's been an Adam Character day, and those two guys are the bookend defensive ends for this Oklahoma defense, and it's it's a coin toss between which one is better. They both are outstanding football players. Moore plays the open side, and he's been able to make more plays, at least statistically, so far this year. But Character, he had a great first half. Those are two very solid defensive ends for the Cornhusker defense. Moore last week against Texas, three stops behind the line, broke up a pass had a sack and the pass broke up broken up here makes it third and eight and Reed feels the heat as he throws to Pettigrew and Tierre Green grabs hold of him and hangs on at the 33. Well, that's going to set up an inter interesting call for coach Mike Gundy. Do I go for it here on fourth down inside their territory do I try the long field goal which I don't think he'll do that I, I would think at this point he's going to try and go for this one. Pettigrew make that catch and a solid tackle coming up by Tierra Green holding on for dear life. Well it would be about a 51 yarder Ricks has a 53 yarder this year but they go for it on fourth and five. Wind at their back. Reed the short toss dropped by Anthony Parks. The pass was a little bit high but it appeared catchable. Boy, I don't know that you go to Anthony Parks in a situation like that and you got a Darius Bowman and Dewan Woods as good as receivers but you still have to expect some Parks to make the play. He was open. He had the matchup that he wanted and you see Bobby Reed react. He thought he had himself a first down toss right there. Went to Anthony Parks junior college transfer who had one catch coming into today. I think when in a critical fourth down situation you're really going to want to get that ball to one of your playmakers and they opted to go to Parks and it didn't work out. Huskers take over at their 34 and Taylor with a short toss and he is victimized by a drop by Hardy. As we look at this week's ESPNU All State BCS standings review. Ohio State Michigan on a course toward the, the Biggest matchup in the long history of that series. USC has been trailing most of the day at Oregon State. West Virginia off. Auburn's knocked off Ole Miss. Florida leading Georgia at the half. And Texas has a, a test. It's always a test when the Longhorns go to Lubbock and they have Texas Tech tonight. Having moved up from ninth to seventh in the BCS with a win over Nebraska last week. Marlon Lucky. With a couple yards to the 38 yard line, where it will be third down at about six. And I think both defenses went into halftime and made some good adjustments. We saw a spate of scoring at the end of that second quarter, and both defenses back on their heels. They regathered at halftime, made some adjustments, and they're shutting the oppositions down right now. Two teams combined in the second quarter alone for 353 total yards and 33 points. Here comes a blitz. It is picked up, and Hardy again had his hands on it, thrown a little behind him, and he can't gather it in. Yeah, Zach Taylor had to throw that behind Hardy because of the drop by the freshman linebacker, Pat Levine. Stepped up in underneath there, forced to throw behind, and Hardy wasn't able to hold on to it. Another display of good defense. Dan Titchener. Sophomore from Cheyenne, Wyoming, kicking to the always dangerous, sometimes to his own team, Parrish Cox, 11th nationally in punt return average. Not much on this one into the wind, and it takes a cowboy hop, and then bubble is cowboy. bobbled, and the Huskers signaling a recovery at the 34. That to be true would have to have touched a cowboy somewhere down there. It was a, a dangerous situation. The ball took a weird hop. And I'm not sure if it hit a cowboy or what happened there. The mad scramble for it at the end. By the kicking team. 
First down. So Oklahoma State will have it at the 36. You see T.J. Bell, number 11, it hits him, and then Parrish Cox trying to rescue the situation loses, it, and they end up recovering the football. And OSU will get it back, starting on offense, trailing by three. Back with 6:09 of the third quarter, and that last punt under official review, it was ruled on the field to have been touched illegally by Nebraska. And right before the kick race, I said Parrish Cox always exciting, dangerous, sometimes to his own team. He tried to pick that ball up when there was absolutely no reason to. And I think the only thing that may bail him out here was if 88 Clayton Severs for Nebraska had already touched it. Yeah, and I think he did. And I think that's what Cox saw. And if he did, then you can pick it up. And really, it doesn't matter what happens. The worst thing is you'll get the ball right there. And I think it was touched by Severs right there. And that's what Parrish Cox saw. So he figured, hey, I might be able to make a big play here if I scoop it and go with the run. Well, he's got a habit of doing that. Well, he did it a couple weeks ago where the ball was surrounded by uh, opponents. After reviews, the ruling on the fluid field stands. First down. The ball was surrounded by four different opponents. He just went in there and scooped it up with no reason for, you know, no chance to do anything. And that's when Coach Mike Gundy told us, I don't know, man, he, he's kind of scary back there. But he's scary for both teams. I think only a young head coach can live with a freshman return man like that. Gundy, the fifth youngest coach in college football. An all time leading passer, named uh, the headman here at age 38. Last year. So, first and 10 from their 36. Mike Hamilton, the starter, who has had uh, very little production today. Monday night. Tom Brady in the AFC East leading New England Patriots at the Minnesota for meeting with Chester Taylor, Brad Johnson, and the Vikings. Is it Monday yet? Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, also available in high definition on ESPN HD and in Spanish on ESPN Deportes. Taylor who broke a club record 95-yarder. That's Seattle. Now back to Dantrell Savage who reaches the 40, and it'll be third and six. You know, and you go back to Mike Gundy a little bit, and you look at him, and he almost looks like he could still play. You know, he's in great shape. And the, the thing that impressed me was how he related with the players when we were meeting with them and, and talking. And you could just see that he's on the same wavelength with those guys. There's no communication gap between Mike Gundy and his players. He's actually under his playing weight, 15, 20 pounds. Reed for Pettigrew does a great job holding on as he's dragged down at midfield by Brian Wilson a gain of 12 for the Cowboys sophomore tight end that was a bullseye from Bobby Reed right there because there's not a lot of room to fit this ball into his tight end right here take a look at this from behind and he just sticks it right into the perfect spot right between the eight and the seven on Pettigrew and even though the coverage was there it still wasn't going to be good enough because it was a perfect pass from Bobby Reed. Better grew out of Tyler, Texas, mostly a blocker in high school. They think a great weapon in the future. Deep for Bowman and double coverage and incomplete. Now let's go down to Vince Welch. Well, Ray Bentley was just discussing uh, Mike Gundy, and Gundy said something interesting about uh, his recruiting. He says it's not enough to get good players, but he wants to get good people. He'll take a little less talent on a player if that player is going to pay the price every day. And Gundy's backed it up since he's taken over. He has let go 13 players in six, 16 months. Nine of those guys let go a year ago and four of them this year. And he says the program isn't 100% cleaned up yet. There's still maybe a couple to go before the season's out. But no question, Mike Gundy wants the uh, evaluation of human beings to, to be part of his recruiting process. Hamilton on the toss sweep. No room there. You know, to follow up on that, what Vince was talking about, he said if he can get seven out of ten, players his recruits 
that are the kind of person, the kind of human being that he's looking for, then you're going to have uh, in, in a four year span, they take 20, 25 a year. He said, you're going to have 70 out of 100 guys that are doing things the way you want to do them. And he feels he can get it done with that kind of number. And those other three are either going to figure it out or be and, gone and, and go along with the seven who do things right naturally or they're not going to be around. Right. Reed on third and eight. Looks to keep all the way. And Carriker drags him down, showing his speed at defensive end at the 45. And they have that kind of confidence in Bobby Reed on a third and eight. They're going to go ahead and let him run the football. And take a look at the comparison, at least throwing the football today. And you see it's pretty even between the two. The difference is Bobby Reed has been able to make plays with his feet, in particular that 56 yard scramble that really ignited that Cowboy offense. Matt Fodge on. This is the second time today, the Big 12's leading punter averaging better than 49 per kick. Rixby standing at his 10. Fodge, end over end low. Rixby to the 19. Tonight, two rival coaches who are well accustomed to going head to head. Tennessee's Phil Fulmer and Steve Spurrier, South Carolina, meeting on ESPN at 7:45 Eastern. Big one in the SEC East. Volunteers of the game coach, both chasing Florida in the division. College football primetime on ESPN again, 7:45 Eastern, 6:45 Central tonight. You know, we talked about Parrish Cox and the things he's able to do. He's also a punt gunner. He covers down on punts. You see him show up there from the right side of your screen and make that tackle. A scoreless third quarter off the hands of purifying a late flag. Two of them, in fact. Yeah, there was no doubt about the interference on that one. As Martel Van Zant thought he was beaten, jumped the receiver before the ball got there. Drew George is our referee. We're going to have a conference over this one. Discussion because they add personal foul Nebraska to the obvious defensive pass interference. Pass interference, number seven on the defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number 16 on the offense, 15 yard penalty, it'll be first down. So Van Zandt interferes and then Purify is flagged for the personal foul after the Van Zandt that's defensive big, interference. Right, and that's a big mistake by Purify. You see the interference, it's obvious. And then the hit afterwards, and that, that was fine. And then Purify went over and wanted to talk about it, and that was taunting, and that's the penalty. Purify hitting Donovan Woods to draw that flag. Incomplete intended for Nate Swift, who's had a very quiet afternoon. Sophomore from Hutchinson, Minnesota. It'll be second and ten back at the Husker 20. First five drives, mostly with Brandon Jackson. Nebraska offense looked unstoppable. You see since then, just 44 total yards, and the difference is the Cowboys have found a way to shut down the run. They're getting plays from their defensive line. McBean and DeGrade are making plays, and then the linebackers, Johnson and Levine, are making plays. Jackson back to work. That cutback. He can turn a play that's going nowhere into a big gainer. He has done that twice now. A complete reversal of field and a first down. With a flag thrown back at 26 after a gain of 12. And this is an element of Jackson's abilities that I had not seen on tape. I'd seen him as a, a guy that would hit a. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 
Suck it down. He would hit a hit a gap and he would be able to accelerate. He could bounce it outside. This cutback wrinkle that he has into his game is something new that I haven't seen from him, but he's very good at doing that as well. The great vision that a running back has allows him to make those kind of runs and those kind of plays. But this one comes back on the penalty against Terrence Nunn. Indicated 10 the yards against clock operator reset the clock to two minutes 44 seconds, please. Indicated a 10 yard penalty against number 83, Terrence Nunn. And that turns a gain of 12 on the terrific cutback ability of Jackson into a second and 14 back at their 60. Taylor had hit nine straight passes. Including the touchdown late in the first half to purify. He's now missed four of his last five until this connection with Marlon Lucky. And Lucky breaks, tackles, and picks up the first to the 36. 21 yards. You know, when I looked at this game, I thought that the Nebraska offense needed to run a lot of screens and draws against this aggressive Cowboy front four. And sure enough, they come up in a critical situation. And they get them linemen rushing up field. You see three linemen all over the quarterback. Nobody left back there to take Lucky on the screen pass. They get blockers out in front to take care of the linebackers. And he almost busted that one out the other end. So the Huskers fight off the penalty blues and keep the march alive. The out is too high for Purify. And let's get a New York update in the studio from Matt Weiner. Hi, right, Dave. It's a Taco Bell update from Corvallis. USC on the road and in some trouble against Oregon State. They've turned it over three times, and Matt Moore hits Joe Newton there for the touchdown to the back of the end zone. SC trails by 13 in the third quarter. And, Ray, if that stands, I'm not sure how much of a shocker that would be. A little bit of a shocker, a little bit, but but USC has been up and down all year. You, you know, you haven't been able to put a finger on. Certainly, they haven't been the dominant team that they were last year or the last couple of years. Lucky undercut by DeGrate before he could cut back. That's good defense right there. They tried to outflank him, get a little toss to the weak side, and the defenders were slanting in that direction. And you see the linebacker number four, Levine, coming over along with DeGrate to finish that playoff and a nice job by Van Zant the corner holding up that secondary contain. I know Nebraska would like another shot at USC. Did you think played them about six weeks ago? I think there's a lot of people who would like a shot at USC this year. And that definitely not as a dominant football team. Some chinks in that armor. Here's a third and nine. And Taylor Angrily has to call timeout. Something wasn't right with that Nebraska offense, and it definitely frustrated Zach Taylor. So let's take a look at our Best Buy playbook. This play came towards the end of the first half. This is a play action pass from Bobby Reed. You're going to watch. Here's the safety. Right here, and that's Andrew Shanley. You're going to get a little fake right here, which is going to hold Shanley just momentarily as he's got deep middle. It kind of frees him. He doesn't make that turn and break, so he doesn't get over to that skinny post in time. And Dar uh, Darius Bowman breaks it inside, breaks the tackle from Grixby, and scores the easy six points to get the Cowboys to within three before half. And that's where we stand right now. And that's still Bowman's only catch. Which is amazing because this is a guy that they feature in the offense and they like to go to, but Nebraska has taken him away. Kansas Jayhawk defenders will never forget what he did to them two weeks ago. 13 catches, school and Big 12 record, 300 receiving yards, including four touchdowns, 54, 25, 55. And 64 yards, and he single handedly knocked off KU 42 32. One of the 11 best individual days ever by wide receiver in college football history. Taylor knocked away from Swift, 
by Jacob Lacey, and the Cowboy defense has held again. And I was impressed watching film of the Cowboys of the play of their quarterback. Both Lacey and Van Zant have made plays today, and Lacey comes up with a huge one on third down. You see him step in front of this thing and rip it out at the end. That's just great play by a corner being in the right proximity and then making a play on a football. Titchener on for the third time. Last time, Parrish Cox tried to pick one up, and it almost cost Oklahoma State possession. And that one glances off of him, but goes out of bounds. He, he's something else out there. He, I tell you what, Mike Gundy holds his breath every time he sends him back there, but. And when we talked to Mike Gundy about it, he said, you know what, he's crazy, but he thinks he can go the distance every time. And, and he just is going to make a play one way or another. And they weren't going to put him out there initially. And Coach Gundy said, put him back there. We're going to let him play. Well, he took the first kickoff of the season, 96 yards for a touchdown. Coaches, when they were recruiting him, said, very first kick of the year, you're going to be on the field. Not only was he on the field, he brought it all the way back. He's returned a punt. As long as 63 yards, so that's why he's out there. Sometimes uh, with the ill-advised gambles and all, Reed jumps on the fumbled snap. Coming up later, time permitting, the thrifty car rental post-game report with John Craig and Doug, featuring highlights and analysis from across the country. And this is just something that you cannot have—a center quarterback exchange problem. And it looked to me like David Washington, the center, didn't get that one up high enough. Maybe the last play of the third quarter. As Reed connects with Anthony Parks. Parks, the intended receiver on the, the play that ended the last Oklahoma State possession. Short gain here. And the scoreless th third quarter after the two teams combined for 353 yards and 23 points in the second quarter. 23-20 Nebraska it remains. ESPN's presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. A 70 degree autumn afternoon in Stillwater, Oklahoma. ESPN College Football presented by Best Buy. 23 20 Nebraska as we start the fourth quarter from Boone Pickens Stadium. A. Barnett, Ray Bentley, and Vince Welch. A third and nine for Bobby Reed and OSU. And he pumps and goes deep for Woods. Caught over the shoulder. And Woods down to the 20. strike to begin the fourth. That's just a double move from Woods. He's going to give an out fake. You see him out here? He's going to dip outside and then take it deep and run by the corner Jones and Bobby Reed laid it in there like a feather. Just a perfectly thrown ball again over the top by Bobby Reed. Those are the two former Pop Warner teammates in Oklahoma City. Andre Jones called to on Thursday night. Savage, who has one touchdown run, has another. And Oklahoma State has its first lead. And that's the explosiveness of Savage. He got himself a little room outside, hit the gas pedal, and benefited from the great block by DeWan Woods out on the corner and just blew past him inside the pylon for the big score. From 16 nothing down Oklahoma State can go up by four two plays into the fourth quarter if Ricks can handle the PAT they've had one block today this time a low snap handle 27 23 Reed starts the quarter 55 yards to Woods and on the very next play, Savage takes it over from 20. Oklahoma 
State 27 to 23 the Cowboy wide receivers pride themselves in downfield blocking and here's how that can pay off. Well uh, Darius Bowman right here hits Jones and we'll take a look at it after this return. It's something worth waiting and watching. France Hardy runs out at the 18. Let's go and take another look at this replay and you see a Darius Bowman number 12 here watch him hit Jones and just knock him back into the end zone and then up top here you've got Grigsby being blocked by Dewan Woods and Woods just hangs on to him and then it's too late and Savage sees that little gap on the outside and that's how you break long runs and this Oklahoma State offense is a big play offense they busted many big ones and the biggest reason is is the blocking of those wide receivers and they showed it to you there. Nebraska out of the eye and Brandon Jackson wrapped up by Patrick Levine. Let's get an update from the New York studio and Matt Weiner. All right, Dave, story of the day. In Corvallis, where the Beavers continue to pull away from USC. This is Sammy Strotter, and there he goes. 70-yard punt return, his third of the season for a touchdown to lead the nation. 17 unanswered points now for Oregon State. They lead it by 23. Wow, so that would be, what, two losses for USC in four years? Yeah, they got to do something there. That's, that's just not good enough. Taylor on second and nine. Quickly to purify. And with the dive across the 25, he brings up third and one. Martel Van Zandt on the tackle. Zach Taylor down by four. But the entire fourth quarter ahead of him. And an Oklahoma State defense that, to put it politely, has late game issues against Kansas State. In the last four minutes, 150 yards and two touchdowns. Wildcats won 31 27 last week against AM. 162 yards, 14 points in the fourth quarter, including uh, fourth and 13. They converted on a 65 yard game time drive that ended with three seconds to go in regulation. The Cornhusker player down back at the 12 yard line. And reason for stoppage here. So a so and ties it with three seconds to go. They win it in overtime on. The block PAT. That's the kind of heartbreak the Oklahoma State defense has dealt with in their two Big 12 losses. And the injured player is left guard Greg Austin. Yeah, to, to expound on that a little bit more, Oklahoma State. Well, here's a look at that last week. You see Savage taking off on a 60 yard touchdown run, which broke that 2020 tie in the fourth quarter. And then the touchdown to tie it up with just three seconds left. And then the kick to tie it in overtime. A low kick by Jason Ricks was blocked by a lineman who was just standing on the line of scrimmage with his arms up. So it was definitely a kicker error on that one. And they've lost two Big 12 games by a total of five points. This team could be easily undefeated in, in conference play. Bill Callahan now out to look at Greg Austin, his senior guard from Cypress, Texas. 18th start today. Versatile offensive lineman can play both guard spots and center. Gingerly helped to his seat. He missed the Kansas State game earlier in the year due to injury. And uh, left leg issue, obviously, they'll check on over there on the Nebraska bench. trying to fire up the crowd the OSU defense on a third and one Baylor had a streak of nine straight completions cold throughout the second half with a power eye look Cody Glenn right at the marker that looks like one they're going to have to measure Nice play by Roderick Johnson, the linebacker, coming up and filling the hole along with Nathan. Well, the sophomore from Rusk, Texas, who entered fall camp listed as a co starter at I back with Jackson. Next week, Saturday Night Football on ABC returns. Most of you will see the ACC showdown between Miami and Virginia Tech. 
Others will see Marshawn Lynch and number 12 Cal against UCLA. Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines next Saturday at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific. It is close enough to measure. The referee gave the, the short sign and then they decided to measure it. And it's a good thing they did. They go to uh, six foot 230 pound Cody Glenn and by the nose of the ball he keeps the drive going. Gundy after what would be the biggest win of his brief year and a half as head coach at his alma mater. Well, you can just feel the nervous energy coming off of him. Taylor under pressure and sacks back at the 20 Marquee Fountain number 97 who has a backup still one of their top sack men and second on the team and tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Here's a little bootleg and not much of a fake by Zach Taylor. He certainly didn't fool Fountain and he hangs on for dear life. And then it's finished up by Roderick Johnson a huge play by the Cowboy defense which really has turned it around pitching a shutout here in the second half. Screen is dropped by Marlon Lucky and it wasn't going to go much beyond where he was juggling it anyway at the 20 third and 18 coming. Good alertness by the Cowboy defense. They anticipated the screen that time and they didn't have defensive linemen with the blinders on rushing upfield. Stayed back, took that thing away, set themselves up in a nice third and 18. Forty thousand plus on their feet in Stillwater. As they come after Taylor with a safety blitz he hangs it up deep incomplete for none. Great coverage over there on none by Parrish Cox the freshman pressed him at the line took it away from him and then ran with him down the field Taylor just had to throw it up in the air and hope. Marquis Fountain sacked the key to that Cowboy defensive stand and Nebraska will have to punt. When they brought the house bringing safety Donovan Woods along with linebacker Pat Levine and Taylor knew he had to get rid of the football and the press coverage over there took away any chance of separation. Now watch Parrish Cox you can never take your eye off of him. He may bring it all the way back he may run the wrong way. Yeah. No one knows. Titchener. With the wind at his back, the nose up spiral. And Cox wisely runs away from that. Not far enough if you're a coach. Dead after 58 yards. The longest of the year for Titchener. And Bobby Reed of the offense out to try and add to a four point lead. You're watching ESPN on ABC. On a day that just was tailor made for tailgating in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Cowboys take over at their 23 with a four point lead and 11 and a half minutes to go. Trying to deal Nebraska its second straight Big 12 loss. And to give this to Dantrell Savage, who has a couple of touchdowns and refuses to go down. And they finally have to whistle him after pickup of about eight. The Big 12 North was a tie between Nebraska and Missouri beginning today, but Oklahoma won at Columbia 26 to 10 earlier, and so the Tigers fall to three and two. So Nebraska fighting to maintain sole possession of the division lead. Meanwhile, Texas tries to stay the only unbeaten at Texas Tech tonight. And Oklahoma State at one and two in conference play but the difference in the divisions is there is not a team in the south below 500 for the season <laughs> mix up there and Bobby Reed just had to tuck it himself and get what he could half the north is below 500 Kansas State started the day four and four none of the south below 500 the worst at four and four Texas Tech and Baylor 
Really no chance. Bo Rude right there waiting for Bobby Reed on the Bosch play. The North Division just begging for Nebraska to return to uh, its usual power position and take over. But they have the sole lead. They've got to come from behind in Stillwater in the final 10 minutes. On third and two, Reed keeping first down. He is a powerful 6'3, 230, old school quarterback. And all you have to do is ask him what it feels like when he sees a defense line up to blitz him. And you know all about Bobby Reed. That's what they do. You know, I, I watched the uh, Texas game before we played last week, and you know, um, I felt that they were disrespecting Colt McCoy. And you know, uh, I'm proud of him and what he did. You know, he stood in there, he took some hits. You know, I'm gonna take some hits today, and which would be fine. And you know, that's just football. You know, you don't get hit. That is good for 19 yards to Adarius Bowman. Just his second catch of the day. He had the 45-yard touchdown late in the first half. Bobby Reed takes it personally yeah, when he's blitzed. I guess, and, and well, he should. But this is a great play on the on the play action, the bootleg look. And look at him throw the ball on the run. He is so accurate, regardless of whether he's standing in the pocket or on the run. He puts the ball right where it needs to be. And it doesn't matter if they blitz. He's going to take care of his business. Coming back from a concussion that knocked him out of the game a week ago. Savage. Inside the 30 to the 26 and another OSU first down. Barry Sanders is in the house today and that was reminiscent of a Barry Sanders type run from Savage who's kind of reaching back on that hamstring there. I tell you what if you're going to pull a hamstring you do it on a move like he just did. Still had enough to get himself outside and get extra yards after that spin move, but that spin was something of beauty. He got 18 yards. And you could see right when he felt that hamstring grab on him at the 26. A yard short of 100, which would be two straight weeks to come off the bench. You get 100 yards rushing, 134 against the Aggies last week. All three members of the Oklahoma State tailback committee have 100 yard days. Hamilton, Tostin, and Savage. Savage, the leading rusher today. Reed is second, eight carries, 61 yards. So it is Keith Tostin back to work, and he bowls over the Nebraska tackler, Shanley, and reaches the 10, 15 hard-fought yards for the freshman. Uh, early in the game, they were running to their right side and getting it done now. And this drive, they're going to the left side, and they're getting it done. Just a great job by the offensive line, getting a hat for a hat. You see, the tight end is the key to that. Brandon Pettigrew gets the edge for that offense. When he makes them blocks on the edge, that makes it so easy for Tostin and the other backs to get around the corner. Seventh play of the march coming. They marked him down at the 12, and so first down and 10 from there. Toast it again. Huge hole up the middle to the two. Boy, Andrew Shandley has got a couple of Keith Toastin tattoos on his yeah. back in those last two carries. Shanley's a tough player. He'll stand in there and take it, but you don't want Shanley to be the first guy to hit the running back. He's the free safety. Right now, the offensive line of the Cowboys is dominating the line of scrimmage. Nebraska in the first half got 124 yards from Brandon Jackson. In the second half, he's got just 31 on six carries. And the Cowboys doing it any way they want on the ground through the air doesn't really matter to them. This is a second and one. And they go off tackle to Julius Crossland, their short yardage specialist. Big 235-pound junior. That's going to be real close to a first down. In fact, it is. Crossland, who moved from tailback to fullback last year, was their leader with 12 touchdown runs. Just a power play off tackle. Crossland lowers the pads and runs through Tier Green to get enough yardage for the first down. Crossland will stay in the game. First and goal from the one. 
OSU the chance to go up 11 with a touchdown in PAT, the eight minute mark. Again to give to Crossland who powers through for the Cowboy touchdown. Caught the Oklahoma defense, or excuse me, the Nebraska defensive line in a shift. And they just handed it to Crossland up the middle. He ran to where guys were leaving from. And that's as easy a touchdown run as you'll get. The third of the year for the junior from Amarillo, Texas. Jason Ricks to make it OSU by 11. Good snap and hold this time. And the kick is good with eight minutes, five seconds to go. Oklahoma State, once down 16 to nothing, has an 11 point lead on number 20, Nebraska. You're watching ESPN on ABC. A 34 7 Oklahoma State run in progress with 8.05 remaining. They lead by 11. Dave Barnett with Ray Bentley. Last week, Nebraska almost had a program reestablishing win over Texas. This could be a program establishing win for Mike Gunn. It really can be. I and mean, Nebraska came out and took control of this game early on, but ever since then, it's been all Oklahoma State, and they're doing it with the quarterback, Bobby Reed. To me, he has made the difference in this deal with pinpoint passing and then opportunistic running, and he has gotten it done for the Cowboys. Well, probably against his better instincts, Franz Hardy finally could not resist bringing a kick back out of the end zone, and it was not a good decision. Grant Jones coming down and making the big special teams play, and when things start going right for you, they go right in a hurry, and that's what Oklahoma State is riding the wave of that confidence right now. Zach Taylor in the first half, 9 for 10, 109 yards. Second half, he has not looked like the same player at all. 3 out of 12 for 43 yards. And he starts at his 10, down 11. That's what got him the 16-0 lead. The runs into the secondary by Brandon Jackson. 21 more yards here. Yeah, and I, I find it curious. I know they have a lot of talented running backs in Nebraska. But when you have a, a kid that, like Jackson who had 124 yards in the first half, I, I think you ride that horse a little bit more. And they went away from that. Jackson now on his 20th carry, 176 yards. And he gets him out of the shadow, literally, of their own goal post. Now Taylor to the air. And the out timing was off all the way, intended to Terrence Nunn. Good pressure by that Cowboy defensive line ran a little a stunt there where they brought the defensive ends inside the tackles outside and got into a throwing lane and Taylor just had to throw it away. Got to be in the back of the defenders mind. Oklahoma State has led under the two minute mark in both of their conference losses to Kansas State and to Texas A&M. But then they break that cycle here today. It's number 20, Nebraska. Taylor steps up and throws incomplete. Again for none. Woods time to hit perfectly. Let's check in with Vince Welch. One of the members of that Oklahoma State secondary, Martel Van Zant, uh, as uh, Ray Bentley noted earlier, is deaf, and he has been nominated, Van Zant, for the FedEx Orange Bowl Courage Award, which was created by one of our own ESPN the Magazine senior writer, Gene Wojciechowski. And uh, Van Zant is a terrific story. The junior defensive back was born deaf, but it didn't stop Oklahoma State's previous head coach, Les Miles, from recruiting him. Miles had a brother who was deaf and said, if Van Zant can play, Let's get him. They haven't been sorry. Taylor on third and ten. Complete at the 47 to Todd Peterson for 16 huge yards. The former walk-on with just his ninth catch of the year. 
And give that credit to Zach Taylor because he avoided the rush, moved in the pocket, and then found his receiver Peterson open on the back side. You see Peterson get a little push off there, got away with that part of it. But Taylor found him, and the timing of the ball was perfect, and it kept Nebraska alive. It's going to be interesting with Martel Van Zandt is his coordinator, Vance Bedford, says he has NFL potential. Taylor sacked by Peterson. Huge loss back at the 32. Great pressure from that defensive line. It looked like DeGrate got there first. He spun Taylor around, and then Nathan Peterson was right there to finish it off. Here's Taylor. He's going to drop back, take a look around. There's really nothing, nowhere to go with the ball immediately. And there's the initial pressure. It was actually Larry Brown who got the initial pressure. And then Peterson finishes it off. Peterson's a, one of their better pass rushers. They bring him in there in critical situations. They set up the screen. The ball is nowhere near Jackson. And an update from Matt Weiner. All right, Dave, here come the Trojans at Corvallis, down by as many as 23. John David Booty to Steve Smith, 37 yards, 15 points in 3 minutes, 12 seconds, has cut the lead very quickly down to 8. Well, as is their habit this year, they're not grinding people into submission, but they are coming when they have to, coming from behind. Doing it again. So here's third and 23, Nebraska. Under six minutes to play. Down two scores. Woods comes on the safety blitz. Taylor gets it off over. Purify incomplete. Not close. All right, the blitz game worked again for the Cowboys. Taylor running for his life in the pocket. Tries to dump it late, but the pressure is just too much for him. You see him, he never really got a chance to set up. He was running for his life immediately, and then Marquis Fountain falls off and makes the hit as he lets that ball go. Parrish Cox with the sun in his eyes, waiting for this kick from Titchener. And Cox returns from the 21. Turn of about six. 541 remaining. Oklahoma State. So close to wins in the Big 12 play over Kansas State and Texas AM. With the ball with an 11 point lead in Stillwater when we return. And at about 50 hours away or so. Meanwhile, college football presented by Best Buy. Dave Barnett, Ray Bentley, Vince Welch, 5.41 to go. And from their 27, the Cowboys start nursing an 11-point lead. On their last seven first downs, the Cowboys have averaged almost 13 yards. Reed looking downfield here, and he connects with a Darius Bowman up near midfield. Dragged down by Courtney Grigsby. A gain of 22 on this first down. Boy, the timing of this route was perfect. You're going to see a Darius Bowman. He's going to come in. He's going to run a little post route. It looks like a post, and he's going to break it off to an out. And he just turns Grigsby around, and the ball's in the air before he makes that second break. Immaculate timing from Bobby Reed hooking up with his favorite receiver, a Darius Bowman. So that's what the Cowboys have been doing on their first downs, and Grigsby has yet to get up. Nebraska on its first 20 first down plays today averaged almost 11 yards 10.7 on their last nine first downs they've averaged two tenths of a yard. Ouch. Cowboys next go to Austin and boy the last two Oklahoma State Texas games have been adventures. Last time they went to Austin they got a 35 7 and then lost 46 35 49 unanswered points by Texas. Vince Young really establishing uh, himself in that game. And then Nebraska, the big one uh, probably to decide the North, back in Lincoln against Missouri. Missouri, a 26 10 loser to OU today. They go to College Station and close with Colorado. Huskers playing to maintain what they've had this afternoon for a couple hours at least, and that is sole possession of the North Division lead. Missouri fell to three and two with their loss to the Sooners and Nebraska 
in danger of falling back into a tie at three and two. Courtney Grixby, important second year starting corner gets 10 to 2. First down from the 49. Dantrell Savage, okay, apparently, after we reached back for his hamstring on the previous series as we look at the Pacific Life game summary. Take a look at this. This is just the touchdowns. This is the, the run from Savage where he busted it outside, but he had the great blocks on the outside from Bowman and Woods. And then that last touchdown from Crossley hammered it in after the long drive featuring Bobby Reed pinpoint passes. Savage now over 100 yards, 14 carries for 102. Second straight week for Savage to crack 100. And a huge hole to cut back. Down to the 35-yard line. 13 yards. Look who's blocking every step of the way. Number 12, Bowman. You're going to see Nebraska brings the linebacker up right in here, and he's going to see that and cut back is Savage, and he knows there's going to be a hole there. And Bo Rood, the linebacker who was over the top, overflowed to the wrong side. They had no one for cutback, and Oklahoma State took advantage of that early blitz show by Nebraska's defense. So the Cowboys keep it in the hands of the hot back Savage as the clock will hit the four minute mark before the next snap. If time permits stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. John Saunders Craig James and Doug Flutie back in our New York studio featuring highlights and analysis from all today's activity. Huskers called their next to last time out at 401. So again it's all in front of Oklahoma State. They couldn't hang on against Kansas State. They couldn't hang on against Texas A&M last week. If they finish the job here they go to two and two in the conference five and three overall one win away from their preseason goal of bowl eligibility. But I think beyond that Ray you, you have to consider Oklahoma State a dangerous team again. Anybody in the South that's got to play them beginning next week with Texas cannot look at this as, as anything that's going to be at all easy. Yeah I think they're one of the top teams in the Big 12 and you, you know you look at it they, they lost the, their two conference games by a total of five points and they were games where they were in this exact situation here with a few minutes left in the ball game where they had that game under control and in hand and somehow lost it. Now when you want to have your program take that step to the next level you have to win games like this especially given your recent history of losing them you win games like this now you start to develop confidence and the ability to finish and you've got yourself a heck of a pro program going. So the Huskers down to their last timeout. 405 remaining and here's second and nine. Job by the sophomore from Houston, Bobby Reed. Engineering what would be the biggest win of the two years under Mike Gundy. The fake and the deep ball for Woods and just off his fingertips inside the 10. I like the play call though. You know, a double move, a, a kind of a hitch and go look to the outside and take a chance on going ahead and busting it wide open and try and catch him on a score. Here's a little hitch. You're going to see a little stutter and then a go. And Grixby back in the game had enough of a cushion to recover. And he's able to show pretty good coverage out there, and Reed had to throw it outside. I still like that play call, going for the jugular. You know, you get it. Maybe sometimes you want to get conservative in a situation like this. I think you have to fight against that and keep going for it. That stopped the clock, though, right at four minutes. Did the Huskers a bit of a favor? Now Savage. And as he hunts for room up the middle, there is none. Well, Nebraska's last trip to Stillwater, 2002. The future Denver Bronco, Tatum Bell, at 182 yards. Rashawn Woods, DeWan's brother, 134 receiving. And Josh Fields, two touchdown passes, one rushing, as the Cowboys knocked off the Cornhuskers that day. 24 to 21. That ended a 24 game losing streak against Nebraska. 
First win for Oklahoma State in the series since 1961, back in 2002. Huskers use their final timeout rate with 352. Yeah, and, and I think that's not a bad use of the timeouts because now they've got them in a fourth down. They're going to get the ball, and when you get the ball, you can go ahead and stop it on offense, and it's going to leave them enough time to go ahead and get two scores. And Nebraska's well aware of the propensity that Oklahoma State has had for losing leads at the end of the games, and they want to be able to put that kind of pressure on them. Big result from earlier today in the Big 12 on ABC Oklahoma 26 to 10 at Missouri. So the Tigers at that point fell out of the top spot tie in the north with Nebraska. Texas and Texas Tech about to uh, kick it off in Lubbock. Kansas has knocked off Colorado 20 to 15. Jayhawks have had some heartbreaking defeats. Kansas State by 21 over Iowa State and what's always an uh, interesting battle between Texas A&M and Baylor. And that series continues tonight in Waco. When Baylor beats A&M, that means T-shirts all over <laughs> Waco the next day. On fourth and eight, they go for it from the 34-yard line. And the Huskers creeping up to the line to show blitz to Reed. Remember he said he sees that and he feels personally disrespected. He loves to take it out on a blitzing defense. He might just be trying to draw him off sides. And indeed he did. And try not to draw him off. Offense, five yard penalty, third down. Actually fourth down. There you go. So Fodge will have five more yards to work with when he punts. Bobby Reed. A fan of the former prosecutor Nancy Grace, <laughs> Jay Z, Lil Wayne, has he actually been to Inglewood? Probably. His mom was born in Inglewood. Yeah, he's, he he says he had never been there, but he would like to go. So we have again, a, a, in theory, a favorite vacation <laughs> spot. And he does not have a 96 Benz, but not yet. Maybe right after he gets back from England. So the punt will be fair caught by Swift at the 11. Huskers out of timeouts, 89 yards away, down 11 with 3.47 to go. Swift had some room to run with that one. I think he played it rather conservative, calling for that fair catch. Zach Taylor's going to have to come up with some sort of magic to get his football team back into this ball game last week against Texas when they were in this situation they resorted to trick plays they ran a double reverse they ran a halfback pass and they ran a hook and ladder all in the final four minutes of the game to almost knock off Texas what a difference between halves nine of ten of the first four of 16 and constantly hounded well, there's no receiver in the there. second half and there is nobody within 40 yards of where that Taylor pass ends up yeah that that one I'm surprised you don't have a flag come out because there was like you said nobody near here's the judge discussion between the, the line judge and the referee and you get a flag Roderick Johnson and Ryan McBean were applying the pressure lost the down the spot of the foul second down Good work by the officiating crew. And you see Mike Gundy, he's doing a little lobbying over there. He wants that flag thrown down for the intentional grounding, which it obvious was, obviously was. This snap from their own one, second and 21. Taylor in the exact middle of his own end zone. And goes deep up the side, incomplete. Intended for Purify, and here's a late flag. They're going to throw on Martel Van Zandt. And while we wait to hear about the interference, let's bring in Vince Welch. Vince? Well, before Oklahoma State went out on that last uh, defensive sequence as they were huddled over here on the sideline, the coaches imploring them to finish the job. And as uh, Dave, as you and Ray have both alluded to, first down all against fans and right there the, Vince the two games that have gotten away from them but Gundy and his staff imploring his team finish the job make the tackles wrap up don't let this one get away and with 
332 to play. You can almost sense that they're, they're really squeezing it to try to get that clock to run a little faster. Van Zant, uh, as we've recounted during the afternoon, born deaf, so he didn't have to hear the whistle. He has the peripheral vision to know that a flag had been thrown and he was going to disagree. A leaping attempt over the middle, and the pass intended for Matt Perrion, the tight end, who's had no action come his way today, incomplete. Yeah, I'm surprised that Nebraska hasn't gotten the tight ends involved more. Here they go to Herrien, and because of the good underneath coverage by Roderick Johnson, he's got to throw it a little too high for Herrien. But the Cowboys are not laying back and playing zone like a lot of teams like to do in this situation. They are still bringing the heat, bringing a lot of blitzes and putting their corners, their excellent corners, Lacey and Van Zandt out there man to man. 496 total yards for the OSU offense. Juggled and dropped by Purify in the coverage with Van Zandt. Oklahoma State defense has risen up in the second half, pitching a shutout. And these plays are just from the fourth quarter. And they wore down that Nebraska offensive line that came out so dominant early. And they are getting hits all over Zach Taylor. And when you have good corners, you can go ahead and, and blitz with a free conscience. And that's what they've done. Third and 10, Taylor in the second half. Now four for 17, just 58 yards. This fumble, you see him coming on the blitz right there, strips the ball out. Peterson, who had dropped in a zone fire, look, ball bounced right up to him into the end zone for his first career touchdown. And the Cowboys take total control. Ricks for the extra point. Mike Gundy says. All he wants when he recruits is more Nathan Petersons. Not just because of what he did, returning the 19 yard fumble touchdown here. OSU by 18. Around 40,000 at Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. Those not wearing red aren't going anywhere. We're going to enjoy every last second of this one. From 16 to nothing down, Oklahoma State with a 41 to 7 answer to the quick Nebraska start today. Early on, it looked like Brandon Jackson was going to rush for 300 yards, and the Cornhuskers would roll. And uh, Bobby Reed and Dan Trell Savage. Had other ideas and the Cowboy defense after late game collapses against Kansas State, Texas AM finally turns those frustrations into late game big plays to add to the lead. Bruce Redden continues to boom them deep, unreturnable. So without any timeouts, 310 to go, Nebraska from the 20 down 18. And when this thing started, we thought it was going to be a Nebraska blowout. They scored the first 16 points of the game, and then all of a sudden, Oklahoma State turned it up. And look at this in the second half, outscored them 21 to nothing. In fact, all of that here coming up in the fourth quarter. Nebraska fans last week see Terrence Nunn make that third down catch and then the ball knocked free by Aaron Ross recovered by Texas Texas gets the late field goal by Ryan Bailey knocked away by Van Zant intended for purify so the Huskers that close to knocking off number five Texas that'd be their biggest win in five years set up by the trick play the lucky halfback option to Swift. There's the fumble caused by Ross, probably the best DB in America, and Bailey with his first kick as a collegian wins 
Well, the Longhorns in the snow and the wind in Lincoln, 22-20. So Nebraska that close to that big a win. And one week later, they blow a 16 to nothing lead, and they are being blown out in Stillwater. So yeah, they their talk, fans now have to wonder, where's our program? Right, and they talked about, hey, we almost knocked off a top five team, and we, we felt that was our game. We're, we're where we want to be, and things are rolling, and we... Get, rid, get this sandwich game out of the way and we'll take on Missouri for the championship the next week and all those things going for them. And then they come out here today, start on fire, and then totally fall apart in the last two quarters of this ball game. And you know, it wasn't so much them falling apart as it was the effort by Oklahoma State. They came back and got it done with Bobby Reed at quarterback, Toasting running the football along with Savage, and the receivers doing an excellent job, and then that pass rush. The pass rush was the difference on defense in the second half. Nunn gets the first down catch. At least one catch, 22 straight games now for him. Second best streak in Husker history to Johnny Rogers. They're still blitzing. And Taylor over the middle to midfield to France Hardy good for 15 more yards. No timeouts for the Huskers. And needing somehow three scores in two minutes and six seconds. They would fall to six and three overall three and two back into a first place North Division tie with Missouri. After the Tigers lost at home to Oklahoma earlier today twenty six to ten. Oklahoma State would improve to two and two in the Big 12 South as Swift is upended by Van Zandt. Big 12 South undefeated leader Texas with the challenge coming up in just a few minutes they get started at Texas Tech. Just what I call a little China out here running underneath the receiver Swift dropping underneath the coverage of the linebackers to try and pick up some yards. It's Nebraska doing what they can to try and move the football. But the Cowboy defense is playing very strong and still very aggressive and you got to tip your hat Dave to Vance Bedford the defensive coordinator who got him together at halftime and changed a few things and got his boys playing and really did a nice job and we talked with him he was a fun guy to talk to you could see where kids would want to come play for him. Vance Bedford the former Michigan assistant. Coach Heisman winner Charles Woodson and the national title team in 97, the title they shared with Nebraska. Loader over the middle, caught by Brandon Jackson, first down at the 34. And there were some questions about Vance Bedford and his unit answered here today. Now they had been the culprits in the in the two previous conference losses where they had given up leads in fourth in the late in the fourth quarter. Not the case here today. the final minute methodically working their way down the field again the middle open for Jackson Brandon has another first down in the final minute and today's Chevrolet players of the game are Brandon Jackson for the Cornhuskers look like he would control the game in the first half he's at 21 carries 182 yards two touchdowns and Dantrell Savage his counterpart for OSU 17 carries 117 yards and two touchdowns. I would have voted for Bobby Reed myself. Can't go wrong there. Jackson. Short toss in recognition of Jackson and Savage's efforts. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The celebration beginning already in Stillwater. As Taylor again goes over the middle. And Todd Peterson takes it down to the five with 17 seconds left. I can tell you right now this Cowboy defense does not want to let Nebraska score even though it won't affect the outcome of the game. It's pride now. Taylor with a fade for Hardy and it's out of the end zone with 12 seconds. So Nebraska back home against Missouri for the North Division lead next week. Mike Gundy will take this momentum down to Austin. And take on a Texas team about to take on Texas Tech. And even if the Longhorns win in Lubbock tonight, they know they have their hands full with Oklahoma State because the last two years they've had to come from way back, both in Austin and here in Stillwater last week, or last year. 
It's in Vince Young daring do another fade and this time for a touchdown to purify with seven seconds remaining. And they did they put the first defensive line back in the game for that last play because they did not want him to score. But it doesn't matter as Taylor throws a nice ball up into the corner and you see purify use the body to get in front of the defender. Is that Van Zan over there that he, he gets in front of and yep. takes that ball away. Which you call too little too late however from that Nebraska offense. Extra point is no good. Congdon pushes it wide right. And it stays 41 29. Former quarterback, former offensive coordinator Mike Gundy and his Oklahoma State Cowboys have fought from 16 to nothing down to the number 20 team in the nation. Another look at that miss. You can see he just kind of sprays it out to the right a little bit, but. Mike Gundy is going to be a happy guy and rightly so as his team did what, what a lot of people thought they wouldn't be able to do and then to turn things around and finish the way they did is a huge step for his football team. I wonder if they're going to tear the goalpost down like they did the, the last time they won. Oh that, that, that's a real good possibility I think this, yeah, this they might is go on huh? goalpost game. Headlines about this program the last several months have been about the uh, Nine figure donation by Boone Pickens. And this win today allows Mike Gundy to tell these players and future prospects that it's not just a program of the future. We've got some accomplishments going on this season. And there's no telling where this team, with the, the big play ability on both sides of the ball, they flashed here this afternoon. End up. First down. They're a young football team as well. 41st meeting, Oklahoma State with just its fourth victory ever over the Nebraska Cornhuskers. This is a coach's favorite formation right here. The victory kneel down. And they don't even have to snap it, it's all over in Stillwater. State defeats number 20 Nebraska 41 to 29. Don't forget tonight on ESPN it's the Tennessee Volunteers visiting Steve Spurrier in the South Carolina Gamecocks. College football primetime on ESPN 745 Eastern. For Ray Bentley, Vince Welch, Dave Barnett so long from Stillwater.